do pods and like some people want to go on them but they don't really want to they <laughs> think they want to go on yeah, it until yeah, they realize yeah. that you have to have a conversation that people are going to listen to and people are going to watch yeah and, and then, then they're like did i mean to say that yeah you know what i'm saying or you get caught up trying to be like funny or have a cool story <laughs> and you tell some shit that like you wouldn't really share. Yeah. And then yeah. you look crazy. You know what I'm saying? So that's <laughs> they they go back like fuck. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You looking for me, you can find me at the spot. Chopping it up with Jonah. We talking about what's hot on the block. Up and they go, man, we bumping. Uh, keeping it confidential. You know this how we coming, we in front. Uh, looking for that real better tune in the stick by. Put on for the city every time that I dip by. Uh, get into that greedy every time that we sit down. Promise you it's real every time that I get round. Come on. <laughs> Been in the field playing, we work. Welcome back, Barbershop Confidential, the podcast. Your boy Jonah, the one and only. And today we got, I guess, a local comedian. Yeah. I mean, you're not from here, but. Yeah, I'm here now. I've yeah. been here for a little bit. Yeah. Rui Montilla. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Rui Montilla. I'm out here, San Diego now. San Diego. Yeah, originally from the East Coast. And um, East Coast, been out in San Diego like five, six years. All right. So, yeah, I've been here like for the most, like, most of the time I've done comedy, I've been in SD. So, oh, okay. it's been cool. Yeah. SD's, SD's home now. Um, so. so the way I found him on Instagram, Harry, but actually on TikTok. Yeah, shout out to TikTok. Like I was just scrolling one. through TikTok, TikTok, and then what caught my attention was like it was like an arrow, and it said this guy's wearing a MAGA hat, <laughs> and I was like, all right, let me see where he's going with this. Yeah, and then yeah. you went in, t- in the in your set, and I was like, oh, this dude's funny. And then I saw San Diego, and I was like, oh fuck, let me reach out. Maybe I can get him onto the podcast. And sh- yeah, so I'm always trying to get like different people. You know, I'm just trying to reach out. Yeah, I appreciate that. The TikTok thing is funny, so. Like I was saying, we were saying off before we started, I, I just started trying to record more stuff this year, you know, like yeah. got a camera trying to film my sets because you never know random show stuff happens. And then um, editing it all myself. So I'm just sitting there, at, you know, and then got to get the captions now because everybody needs the captions. And so, yeah, I had a show in San Diego. It's called Don't Tell Comedy. They do like these pop up shows. Okay. So we were at a gym in PB. A gym like a. Yeah. Like a, it was an F45. So okay. just like, yeah, just like yeah. a. And they do a lot of shows at gyms. And so. I had a show earlier that night, and so I was getting there kind of late. So I, maybe there's probably one comedian had gone already. So I get there, and the guy who's hosting the show is like, yo, just a heads up. There's a few like kind of like Republican-type dudes in well, the front row. Well, that shit was here in San Diego. Yeah, that shit was okay. in Pacific Beach. That yeah, makes yeah. sense, though, low-key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you know from San Diego, like PB, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. PB's yeah. different. San Diego's interesting because like whenever I be out, I always realize certain parts of SD like will be like, oh, I'm in Florida or like I'm in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, that's a different vibe. Yeah. For sure. But yeah, these dudes was there. The crazy thing was they was actually they were nice for the most part. There was no issue. The dude with the hat, it actually said it said MAGA, but it said it in uh in Russian. Oh no shit. Yeah, so when I got there everybody Is he like a was, Russian uh Trump supporter? I guess. I mean he's oh he's That's just funny. he's just ironic. I guess he's like a funny Trump guy. So he um <laughs> he had the hat on and everybody kinda like the first comic brought it up or whatever. And so once he went up, I was like, All right, once I get up there, I'm just gonna address it. Get out the see, way. Yeah, see what I could do. And so my my like, you know, I was trying to lean on the fact that like maybe like as a joke, this guy won't know the difference between different Latinos. So oh, in if fact, I yeah, yeah, so if I say, you know, point out I'm not Mexican, because I know there'd be a lot of energy with the Trump people with the, yeah. you know what I mean, all the wall shit. So I was like, <laughs> let me get the like oh, let me let me try to ease his ease his little conscience, like I'm the baseball type of like, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm the uh, a U.S. citizen, Latino. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even because Dominicans don't got it. Puerto oh, no, shit. That's Puerto Ricans only. Yeah, that's Puerto Ricans. Puerto Ricans, y'all. Shout out the Boricuas, that, you know. Yeah, all the Boricuas. They yeah, let yeah. you know back home. They let you know we got the citizenship. <laughs> you um, bum, dusty yeah, ass. Yeah, I was like, yeah, what? Yeah. They be killing us. <laughs> but um, yeah, that that was funny because like as soon as I got home that night, I was like, oh, that's gonna be a little clip I should use. Yeah. But the whole time I've been thinking more about how do I get people's attention when I start the clip. And so that I was, was like, perfect the so way when I seen it. the hat, I was like, pause it, little sound, point at the hat yeah. and get it going. But the interesting thing with that is like, I thought it was funny. The whole joke was like just me riffing too. But like the weird thing was in the comments, I'm not used to the, com- I'm not, I don't go viral or have like videos do crazy good. So that's probably the video for me on TikTok has the most views. But oh, then, okay. It's bro, the comments that get the on The comments popping. is yeah. weird. The comment sections get weird because, like, you got people who are being cool and saying you're funny, and then you get people who are like, oh, this wasn't funny or whatever. Yeah, you're going to you get, get both. Bro, and then people take it so serious because they really caught up on the Trump stuff. Yeah. And they'll analyze you, bro. Like, I had a dude write, like, he was like, I see you avoiding all eye contact with the oh. guy. I'm like, bro, you wasn't it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it was like, a, I found it funny because I started out telling dude, like, hey, bro, like, 
what I'm saying? Here's what kind of Latino I am. And then I end the joke talking about how, like, I still wear Yeezys or whatever. And Buddy was, like, nodding his head and enjoying himself. And he was cool. I mean, I didn't make... I didn't even make the video to shit on the guy, which was crazy because a lot of people was in the comments like, this guy's a POS. Da, da, da. Yeah. I'm just like, bro. But they, it, because it's the back of his head, so yeah. they don't even know what it really they don't says. Know exactly, yeah. Like, you could have really lied and been like, my guy, it's just a yeah, regular, I regular yeah, ass. I went crazy shit. with it, yeah. So yeah. it was, um, but yeah, man, that's that's cool that like that video on TikTok did good. And I had a couple people hit me up, which was nice. But yeah, it's like the pros and cons. Like I had to remind myself that because like you might have been one of the first people who actually hit me up. Oh no shit! Yeah, and then you hit me up and stuff, and I was like, "Oh, this is dope." I remember telling my wife, "I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go on a pod, like you know, do a little podcast, do saw me on TikTok." It's like was the cool thing, and then I started getting some comments that were negative, and you get in your head, bro. Like, hey, real, sh- real that, shit. That yeah. shit really had me. I was like, oh damn, people really like couple. It, it's like five people, but like you'll forget that like. 10 people said something nice and somebody invited You'll you on the podcast. You'll focus on the negative ones and shit. Easily, yeah. So we'll take the social media <clears throat> stuff, yeah. like, for real. And like you, the thing that's crazy is when something goes viral you or goes crazy, it. you can't stop it yeah. and you don't even know what's happening until you look at your phone and see like, what's going on? <laughs> and now you're digging through comments yeah. and stuff and it's just like, I could get why people will turn it off and not, you know, not yeah. look at it, but... I feel like when it's too much comments, like, I'm not going to sit there and read through Like, yeah. when that video went viral, it was going, like, comments, comments. I was like, nah, I'm not. I like, at first, yeah. I was like, oh, shit, it's kind of fun, a little back and forth. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'll stop, man. That shit is too much. It's crazy because there's so many, like, I think social media is nuts now because you just don't know what's the right thing to do sometimes. Because I'll be or like. The right I, time. Yeah. Or... I'll be like, oh, ignore these comments, right? I'll be yeah. like, forget that. And then I'll listen to, like, Gary V. And he'll be <laughs> and Gary V will be like, no, bro, you got to talk to the people. <laughs> like, and I'm like, wait, should I tell people thank you for, like. Yeah. Yeah, for the should, negative comments the, or like should i ignore the negative and say say what's up to the positive yeah. people like and so yeah it's then you got joe rogan's like man i never look at the comments exactly. and you're I like don't even read it i need you all to come together and tell me what the fuck to yeah. do because this is weird that shit really is and yeah. the thing too is like it gets you like you get in your head yeah. so like for me i i made a goal where i was like i'm gonna post more on social media this year and i was like every week i'm gonna try to put up you know like a little clip here and there and then what happens is something does good and you get excited and then you start trying to like, oh, I'm going to put like, more out. I'm going to yeah, you, yeah. you think you're going to flood the streets. Like you think, oh, I'm about to take it to the next <laughs> level. And then when your next couple of videos get your normal amount of views, yeah, like, Yo, what you get humble fuck? pie real quick. Yeah. And that's the thing. So it's um, I'm trying to like chill out and just keep posting this year and just see where it goes. But I've noticed yeah. that people just like nosy type shit like cheese man. I don't know if you know what that is. 100%. Yeah. You know, like gossip and shit. Yeah. Yeah. I had found another video on, t- on Twitter about this girl got caught fucking... Some other dude, like, and he's like, how can you do this to me? And I was like, yo, I'm going to upload it. Motherfucking went viral again. Yeah. But this time, they thought it was me recording. <laughs> they thought you was in the room? Like, yeah, they, <laughs> like they thought it was me, like, caught my girl cheating. Oh, they thought it was dead. So then they fucking found my girl's TikTok and started talking shit to her, like, yo, how could you do this to him? That's fucked up. You a no. hoe? And I was like, she's like, babe, what is this? And I was like, I don't know. And so then I went back and read the comments. I was like, they think that's you. <laughs> that's crazy. So they didn't even know it was like you exactly. posted something you've seen. That's the thing, too. You never know who's the first person who saw to, to something post or it, posted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, yeah. these motherfuckers just ran with the, like, Robo. the assumptions. Like, yo, that's his girl. You fucked up. And then there was yeah. comments like, you probably deserved it. Because they, they saw my videos like, are you fat anyway? And I was like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Why y'all coming at me for? <laughs> Yo, people are mean too. Yo, people are mean behind the yeah. phone. Yeah, oh, people oh, mean facts, behind yeah. the phone. People are mean. Those Twitter yeah. fingers be be yeah, real, bro. real light. Yeah, that shit that bugs me yeah. out. Like my day job, I work at a college, so like I deal with college kids who like on an email they're super tough, oh. and they act crazy on an the email. Yeah. They'll write the wild. They'll act so bold. And then when you show up at the room, just doop, 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 knock on their door. <laughs> like, oh. Uh, they'd be like, oh, no, you know, it's just like a little, oh, now we're cool, right? Or yeah. you'd be like, hey, I need to meet with you in person. And then they get tight. They're like, whoa, whoa. Like, they used, oh, hold up. Yeah, because they're, cool, they're cool to type away, yeah. man. People are, they, you know, and I think that's the thing about like nowadays, bro, everybody's like bold on their phone or whatever. And they forget, yo, like in real life, some people will smack you. That's how yeah. I feel about when people say shit. Like, I don't want to have people come on and say shit just because it sounds cool to say yeah. and that's not really how they live because yeah. that's like you know people are in low you in real life like like people will know that you're over here capping online and shit Facts. Like, like you need to chill out with that shit yeah. like keep it 100 if it's if yeah. it never happened don't even say it like facts and that's the thing it's yeah. like for me it's like crazy because social media you can't tell when people post stuff they're just doing it for like you know the Attention moment or whatever yeah. yeah and it's crazy because like doing comedy it's like you can do whatever you want on stage 
you can say whatever Facts. you want. So some people that like none of their jokes are really they just it's just funny things they came up with or an idea they or like have. a story they heard. Yeah, you know shit. what I'm saying? Like or you know your story has is mostly the real story and then you got to punch it up and have some funny. Yeah, you got to flare it up a yeah, little you bit. Have yeah, a little yeah, extra yeah. on it, whatever. But you're on stage and it's like art, so you could play around. The closer you are to reality, the better. I think people connect with it more and it's more funny to them. Yeah. But like a lot of people. You know, they want to be like comedians, air quotes, but they just want to talk on their phone. They don't do comedy on a the stage. They don't have to get in front of nobody. So they'll say whatever crazy into their phone. Right. You know what I mean? And go crazy viral. Like there's a kid who lives in one of the buildings I run. I won't say what campus. So I'll leave them alone. <laughs> but one of the schools I want to school, the school I work at, like this kid, he's like viral on TikTok. But, oh, he's, no shit. but he's viral on TikTok for like being like very misogynistic. Oh, you got Andrew Tate there? Yeah, like, he's, like, he's like an Indian Andrew Tate. <laughs> Indian version? Like an Indian Andrew Tate. I was about right? to do an accent. Yeah, that would have shut me down. Yeah, that would have canceled me. He had chicken, tiki, masala. Yeah, hey, I fuck Andrew with that Tate. shit, That's though. Delicious, you know? bro. Yeah, yeah. This kid's wild. He just, he goes on and he like, he don't even talk a lot. He just writes out stuff and then he just stares at the camera and he like makes oh, these faces. And, okay. like, and people go crazy because he just says wild, he says wild stuff like. He says wild shit without yeah, saying Without saying shit. exactly. Yeah. He'll put like, he'll put down like, um he'll, he did this video went viral. It was like him ranking races. Okay. So like who he thinks is the hottest women. Oh, women. Yeah, but he always leaned towards white. And then he put down, so it's crazy. So like, sure. he, it's like this reverse racist type situation where he races against himself. Like, so he'd he, so he be pumping up his white chicks and then he'd be, he just be shitting on his white, like, be, on white his, girls were on the top. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. And then he like, he shits on Indian girls all the time. So like, he gets to Indi his own community to get mad at worked him. up. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, he a troll. He's the fucking Mia Khalifa. Bro, he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. of his niche. He's a <laughs> troll, bro. He's a real troll, bro. They about and, to like, ban him from India. Yeah, and like when he moved on campus, people got mad. Like, nobody wanted to live with him he was popping like the oh, reddit shit. the campus reddit was going crazy and like it's funny because i've seen the kid mad times does he like, look I, like somebody who should be doing that nah it's the thing it's crazy it's like you see somebody on a video they show you their face at an angle yeah. you know what i'm saying but then you see the dude in real life and you're like oh you just is, like you just a little guy like you're just a little kid <laughs> like, like we, we shouldn't be talking yeah, like, like that. he's crazy i've seen him come <laughs> get his mail he's a calm kid you know what i'm saying like he's very polite you know what i'm saying i rode the elevator with the kid he's a nice kid but on social media, he gets to put up this like this act, you know it's what I'm saying? Facade, and yeah. Shit. And he'll go on his live, he'll go on live on TikTok, and he'll like put his phone out the window, and like he'll make fun of fat girls and do like, oh, yeah. okay. And so they'll be coming for him. They'll be like, he needs to get kicked out of school. And I'm like, are we kicking him out of school because of social media? Like that's kind of crazy. Like, you yeah. Know, I but, mean, there's a line. There's a line, right? That's what yeah. I'm saying. I'm like, so what? Eventually, he, he's he gonna. Play, he plays with it, you know what I'm yeah, saying? He's like, like tiptoeing on that yeah, line. He's tiptoeing. Once I'm, he drops the N word, then it's, it's, oh, a, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, rap yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. And shit. I would love for like a fat girl to beat him up though. Oh, facts. That would be sick. Like if yeah. we could get like a couple of fat girls to beat him up on campus. Sit on him, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I'd be pro that. <laughs> Put that on the video. He did this one like everybody got worked up beginning of the school year because he posted this one thing about like uh, he's gonna throw a party. And um, like I said, I'm not gonna say the school I work at. It's not a party school. <laughs> You figure this oh, stuff it's, out. It's not as the issue then. <laughs> there you go. It's not that one. Because uh, that one, yeah, they, they get it in. But the, the school I work at, Calm School, it's not really a crazy school. He kept talking about, oh, I'm throwing this party. And he kept saying, like, uh, th this is how you get people worked up. He posted, he posted, party on this night at my apartment, right? And then he'll put, like, um, wait, limit what, yeah, 150. Not, <laughs> He got a he got weight classes. <laughs> what he was doing, bro, he was going uh white girls free. Oh, that's foul. Bro, right? And then he was charging the darker you got, he was charging money. He would say he was charging to get in like a fee. I'm like, bro, first of all, no one really knows where this kid lives. One, two, nobody's going to this kid. He's not throwing a party, it's just he's trolling. And so, bro, it took everything in me to act like, because I still got to act professional because I need my day job. But it right. took everything in me, bro, to be like, damn, I'm, I could go viral off this kid. Because like, what if I <laughs> what if I show up to his crib and knock on the yeah. door and I just got the video? Oh, it's empty in here? Where the hole is that? <laughs> and just make him look like a clown. But the worst part would yeah. be like, you get fired exactly for, crazy, for like just bro. making fun of his content and shit. Bro, man, students will test you, bro. That's the one thing about my job, like my day like job. Kids in like, general, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Like these college kids, bro. Because I work in housing. So it's like I deal with them when they get in trouble and i'm not a professor it's so like i'm not seeing you in class i just see right. you in real life like i don't care how smart you are you know because kids get away with that because they they be smart so they just do whatever they want their whole life yeah and i'm like nah big dog like this is regular <laughs> life right now you're being an asshole and i don't like that shit and so um 
I've had a couple of kids where it's like, am I going to get fired over this? Like, am I going to grab this kid right now? And sm- yeah, yeah, right. Like, am I going to like have a whole situation like on my hands? Or am I going to like get beat up? What if I get beat up? What if yeah. I try to fight this kid? And, and you lose, ass- right? He's like a That's triple, scary. Yeah, triple I don't like champ, that. That, MMA, yeah, MMA yeah, fighter. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know who be working out, Check for bro. the cauliflower, bro. Check a lot, you got to check for that. A lot of dudes yeah. don't look like they could fight. They could fight. So, yeah. yeah, people be crazy. Social media lets you do whatever you want, be whoever you want to be, you know, which there's cool parts to it. I you mean, could, you, could, you yeah. could really express yourself and you could be... The people who are authentic. Yeah, exactly. Are, I think like, those are the ones that shine best. Like, 100%. Keeping it one in, instead of like this fake facade. I hate that shit. It bothers yeah. me. You ever get see a video and banks you so mad you want to come in you're like, for what? Yeah, you like, 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 I'm not doing I'm going to pass on that. I can't do it. Yeah. yeah. That's why I be saying, like, I be seeing some of my homies who really, like, whether their lifestyle is like they get to live a lavish little lifestyle or whatever, they got a good job or they got a good job but don't say they got a good job, but they could oh, travel okay. and yeah, do yeah, stuff. Yeah. And people, I don't know other people that'll hate on it, but like, yo, you seen so and so just he's out here trying to flex. I'm like, hey, we know the guy in real life. He got it like that. He ain't playing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He, yeah, it's not flex. That's just him living yeah. his life. You just mad because you want to be on the island. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want to you be. Have your you want to be on the catamaran <laughs> yeah, with the you girls. You want your feet the, up. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know at what the saying? beach like, chairs. Yeah. yeah. So it's like dudes like that. It's always funny because like there's like this like as long as you're being who you are. You know, that's cool. Yeah. Like I got some boys like that where it's like they always been flashy. They always been that type of person, even before social media existed. So what would change? Because they got like, a phone. Now they get to like enhance it and shit. Yeah. But, you know, there'd be them people who just a lot of front. And, people, you know people find flexing like shit. They call flex, what they consider flexing is weird. Like I had a dude. He was I posted my J's. I'm a sneakerhead, bro. Like yeah. I got, you know, I love my J's and shit. And I was cleaning my rotation for the week. Yeah. And I took a picture. I was like, yo, Air Jordan ones is my favorite. And he like he didn't reply to me. He didn't like tag me. He just con- like created a story. And he's like, yeah. "Oh, imagine being this age and and showing off shoes." And I heard a I heard somebody say like, "Yo, if you think me posting my shoes is flexing, step your game up." Facts. If you think that's a flex, you know what I mean. Like I can't even post my shit without it being a flex. It's not a flex. It's just shoes. Plus, people like shoes. <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of people like <laughs> sneakers. Like, what do you tell? Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and I thought like you don't. So yeah. you probably think that that's weird. Okay. Right. I always think that's funny, especially with fashion or stuff. People be like, I wouldn't spend money. Like, I joke about like I like. I, I love Jays. I love sneakers too. I got I got Yeezys, and I'm just not throwing my Yeezys away because some of them are comfortable. I, mean, you pay and I for like them. Too. I pay for them. I grew yeah. up poor. Like I know what it's like to not have money, so I'm gonna wear these shits. But also, people be like, I would never. It's like, and I would never trust you to dress me. So like, why? Like, one hundred percent. Why do I care what you have to say? Now, if it was one of my homies, it's like a sneakerhead, and he's like, Hey, yo, bro, them they, that, that ain't garbage. Because yeah. you know what it's like when you get a pair of sneakers. If your homies who sneakers heads, if they tell you, Hey, if they stamp that, say, Hey, yeah. bro, them shits is tough. You even got like the group, yo, yeah, we all. Yeah. What y'all think about these yeah. all those flat- I mean there's always gonna be like that one is like yeah. nah, nah, not for me but they clean or something yeah like cause that. I'm not even really a sneaker head like that and I remember um, I had hit on some on some Travis Scott ones <laughs> on the fragment joint the low joints right but I didn't even know it was I just seen them on the app I was just starting to buy more sneakers so I was like you know what let me treat myself I like sneakers I don't be buying them enough and one of my homies was like a real sneakerhead. I hit him. I was like, oh, yo, I got these, bro. I hit on these. <laughs> he was like, I hate you. He was like, bro, do you understand what you just got? Yeah. And I was like, nah. So he's like, bro, at the time, he's like, you're not a sneakerhead like that. To that point, he's like, I'm going to be real with you. You could keep them. You're going to look crazy. He's going to look fly. Wear them on stage. It's going to be a dope shit. He's like, or, bro, that ass, you could sell them shit. <laughs> you your buy, rent. Buy. Yo, bro, I, sold, <laughs> I held them shits for like three, four, five months, bro. And I sold them shits. And I was like. I paid oh, 160, man. bro. I sold them just for like two racks. I was like, "You better than me, bro." bro. I, I flip them immediately. Like if I know I'm not gonna keep them, and I know they got like a good value, like the next week they're gone. Yeah. Like I ain't holding on to shit. And this is why I'm saying, like sneakers. To me, when somebody goes, "Oh, you're flexing with sneakers," yeah, well, like, like that's what we're flexing. Yeah, I was posting the Bugatti. Yeah. Then you could talk about flexing. Bro, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like you know, what I'm saying you, you. But we you, talk about sne- you sneakers. About sneakers, bro. Like that's yeah. I just don't understand the. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people who be jealous or like they feel a way about how you live your life you know oh that's that's 100 percent. like i see and, I, and I, I think it's crazy when pe- i wish more people would just tag and let me let you know how they really feel yeah because it's like let's get that out the no, way so, me, so i don't mess with you no more it's <laughs> cool me. all love bro go live your life but i don't yeah. gotta waste my time telling you happy birthday on facebook no more like get out of it you know what i'm saying like i don't gotta keep doing that <laughs> yeah. oh, shit he told me happy birthday last year i gotta let me hit him back you know checking your message he told yeah, me like, all right, right he did bro, all right, right all right happy b day yeah, like because i i would go me and my wife like you know we we like to go on vacation and like have a good time my wife loves going on cruises my wife loved gambling we'd be on a cruise ship you know what i mean running around and i'd be telling people i'm like bro i'd be in this casino losing too bro 
It's just not fun to post about it. <laughs> nobody, like, like, yeah. Bro, I was just talking to my girl about that. And I'm like, that's that's funny. Like, nobody ever posts, like, not just him, but like, nobody ever is like, yo, I just lost five racks. Bro, you're mad. That's a flex. Yo, I time? lost five racks and I'm going bro. home to my bed. And, and it's funny because I'll, I'll be on the ship with my wife. Like, we'll be on the ship. We'll be running, flying around. Like, we'll hit a little something. And then, like, an hour or two later, I'll post a picture of like an empty glass. And I'm like, it's crazy how you could just lose the money you just won. <laughs> like, like, for me, I'm always like, yeah. it is what it, I know what it's like when. When I go gamble or like if I'm gonna do that I understand what that is you know what I'm saying and I've had people I had one person hit me up who I went to college with she was like I don't like that you post you post like uh I posted that we were like we we're playing slots and we were going into a bonus and I, but I didn't post what the end result was she's like I don't like that you don't show what happens at the end I was like Mind your business. I can show you what I want to show you. Scroll and it's keep going. A, yeah. like my life's not a movie. I don't got to show you the beginning, yeah. middle, and end. I could just show I'm not, you. I'm not that little, famous yet. Yeah, Max. I could just show you a little piece, you know. But yeah. people, I think they get caught up on their phone, bro, and they live. They live that life where they watch you. And I seen. I was on a vacation. Like this was in November. Me and my wife were. We were out and we were enjoying ourselves. And I seen somebody that I know post like a little meme of like you know when you go out. You don't when you go on vacation, you don't gotta spend your time posting every uh, pic. You like one of those? Oh you know what I mean? Like, bro, bro, just go on vacation. I, I think we have like the same friend, bro. Bro, and I'm like <laughs> probably him. Cause he he literally will post it like, yo, if you if you love what you do, you never take you never wanna experience nothing, bro. bro. Like you stuck in the same city, you don't wanna check out like nothing. other cities, nothing, I'm like, bro. bro. Like you don't wanna see how blue this water is. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you, know you what think Mexican food is only food out here, bro? bro try something different, Dude, man. Like yeah, so I, I, it's always funny to me because, like you said, people will low key they'll, they'll hate from a little their little side piece, you know, what I mean? yeah. their, little, their little side area where they're at, and they'll just hate on you, but they're watching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's the thing that's crazy is like I got That's the one thing I've had to get used to is that like people who don't like you, they're gonna watch you too, and as yeah. long as they're watching, cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Life is good. If, yeah. if that's your, and that's the other thing too is like if your biggest problem is that like. I don't like that people be hating on me. That's a, <laughs> that's pretty good, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'll well, trade lot, my problems in yeah, for that yeah, any lot of, day. A lot of people's parents didn't even grow up in America. So, like, for yeah. that to be your problem is, like, that's a good-ass problem to have. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought about that shit. I was like, damn, my biggest problem is that this dude on TikTok said my Tatis jokes were mid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Y'all like, hold up. Yeah, he said, pretty he good. Said, dude, bro, he said, yo, these Tatis, the Tatis jokes were mid. And then some girl I went to college with jumped in the comments and she was like, your boyfriend said that about your stroke game. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yo, how you jump in and start f- like firing off on guys? Like, <laughs> yo, that's how my girl, somebody yeah, will comment negative bro. and she'll be like, what the fuck? Oh, I'm like, yo, chill, man. Bro. Like, let them, let them cook and shit. Bro, my I, wife, my wife will like my post or share my post and never have watched it. Just, <laughs> she just got to do it. Like, it's like a blick. Like, she's like, I got you. Like, yeah, like, like help you not even help, thinking it's just like double tap, comment like, some like, laughing yeah, like, faces. I didn't even watch the clip. At all, she like I, I'll ask her something like, "Oh, you checked out the the giant post?" She's like, "I didn't watch that." I was like, "Oh, all right, damn." Yeah, yeah, She's man. like, "I watch funny dudes." She's like, "No, nah, fat, listen, bro." <laughs> That's the thing, man. My wife, bro, she she keep it real, bro. She's like, "Listen, man, like, well, whenever I have friends who do stand up, if my wife thinks they're funny, she's gonna support them." Like. She's like, this dude right here, like, she's like, hey, she's like, now nah, you're funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which is, that should keep you humble. Right? You know <laughs> your own wife. It can be your own people, man. Be your own, be your own be people, your own people yeah. man. Yeah. But like, I think um, at the end of the day, like, the more you, like, right, like you got a podcast, right? You got to, you have to build that yourself. Yeah. Nobody's going to believe in that shit more than you. Facts. So at the end of the day, it's like, you just got to put it out there and whether the good or the bad, whatever comes with it. The only thing that'll get you going is being consistent. And so that's what, like, for me, that this, part. Year, this year is, like, the consistency year. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I know i seen, um, I was watching some of the old episodes I was saying, and, like, you were talking about, like, you started in 2019, and, like, you had a certain vision for you and, like, your barber, and then that yeah, didn't work out. So you had, out. you had to pivot and start doing, diff- you know, doing something different. Obviously, pandemic made it real hard, but real, yeah. you had to come out of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me to, for you to ask me to come on the pod and me to go look it up and be like, Man's on, you know, man's on 101 eps. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's not easy to keep doing it over and over. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know it's funny. A lot of people are like, "Yo, congratulations on the hundred And I was just like, "Thanks." Like, but I didn't even find it like a big deal. I was just like, yeah. "I'm just doing this." And I was telling the the last dude, shout out to Mike. I had to cut it out because his mic was off for like 20 minutes. And oh, I was no. like, "Fuck!" I was telling, I was like, "The problem is, I think a lot of you were saying a lot of people popping up with podcasts." 
they're just trying to do it to see if they can make money off of it. Yeah. I started doing it because I like talking to people. Like, I just find podcasting fun, and I was like, I'm going to try it out. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So I think that's the, the thing, though. People see it, though. People see, like, the consistency, and, like, they have yeah. they, they do. People really do be happy for you because they know how hard it is to keep doing something right. over and over, even if it's not the thing that's going to, like, because I've been doing comedy, like, eight years since I started, since, like, the first that's time considered I like on a stage. rookie, too, right? Yeah, and that's, not, and that's the thing. Yeah. I'll say that to people, and they'll be like, you early. Like you just started, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and it's true, but in comparison to some other people, I got I got friends who I know who quit. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing is like, a lot of people will quit whether it's them they stop recording their podcast, they stop getting on stage, they stop, you know, whatever modeling, DJing, whatever like creative thing they do, they might, you know, even clothes. Like I got homies who like are very talented. They might come out with some merch and do it one time, two times, and then you're like, all right, cool, what's next? And like they just don't got it. They just don't keep at it. And if they kept at it. Maybe that design they had that they didn't like, somebody really still would have bought that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I'm realizing with like the not giving up part, that's the, the consistency part. That's like a creative's uh, Achilles heel, man. Because you get in your own head, like, y'all, do I suck at this, bro? I was, you know, how many times I've had that conversation with my girl. I'm like, do I, babe, should I stop? Bro, should I just like put yeah. it, hang it up, and sell the equipment? She's like, nah, babe, you love what you like doing and just keep doing it. I was like, yeah, you're right. You know, like, it's bro, good so you, to have you, that, like, you get, that in your head, you get in your head, bro. It's good to have people who support you, too. Because, like, yeah. you asked, we were talking off off the pod earlier, like, I edit all my own clips right now by yeah. myself. So, what that means is I'm watching that shit over, over <laughs> and, and over and yeah. over. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, um, and you just don't know. Like, I did, um, I just filmed it. I'm about to put it on my YouTube. I feel myself doing the hot ones challenge where you eat all the I saw that. Where you eat all yeah. So my, my wife knows I love that show. So for Christmas she bought me all the sauces. And I don't like I don't do spicy food like that. So, so what you doing, my guy? Bro, I just wanted to see, yo, <laughs> and here's the thing, I just know I'm not gonna get famous. You know what I'm saying? Like in enough time. By the time I get famous, they're gonna be done with that show. Hey, yo, so, low key, when you posted it, I was like, oh shit. He I was, was on the he was on the show. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, I was excited, bro. I'm telling you, man, I put a table out. I bought a little I had a little black tablecloth, red napkins, like I had my little light on. I was like, all right, let's film this. And I sat there. My wife was on the couch. She was like executive producing, hanging out. That's and, um, what's up. I ate all these wings, and I had my friends ask me questions, and I answered. I tried to answer them the whole time while like, the wings got hotter and hotter. So I could see what it's like on the show when you get to that point where it's like you on like wing number eight or nine, and your mouth's on fire. And how do you even how you even concentrate? Yeah, yeah, bro. I was like on wing nine or ten almost, and the question was one of my homies just asked me like, "What was your favorite memories from when we were in high school?" <laughs> bro, and I just couldn't even think about high school, bro. My my, my whole mind was on fire. Like, I couldn't put it together. But it's crazy because I filmed it all, and then afterwards, I'm sitting there. I still got my camera rolling. I'm eating ice cream, and I literally out loud the first thing I said, I was like, man, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to watch this, and I'm going to just think about how stupid it was that I even filmed this. <laughs> and that's the worst part about making content is you yeah. watch it when you edit it, and you think to yourself, yo, my life, am I a joke? Like, is this, like, yeah, like who do I think I am? Why damn, am I doing this shit? I've reached this level. <laughs> like, and it's crazy because you'll think that about yourself, bro, and then somebody will tell you, nah, keep going, or somebody will just be like, yo, when you posting that, I want to see it. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. oh, like, you got to take that and just and just move forward, bro. Like, the getting caught up in the views and all that, that all comes with the work. Yeah, you have, to, you have to be consistent. For right. the longest time, like, yeah, I'm at 100 episodes, but I only have, like, 25 of them on video. Yeah. So, the longest time, I was like, man, I don't know if I want to do video. Like, I'm a big boy. Like, I'm an easy <laughs> target, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I posted one. I was like, ah, fuck it, bro. This is who I am. This is what yeah, I do. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, it is what it is and shit. I think that's important, though. Like, the thing is, like, People really care. I think at the end of the day, they really care about what you say and who you have on the pod and like the stuff you talk about and like how interesting is it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that people get caught up in like um, their own self-confidence or their own like view, view of themselves. I deal with that shit all the time where I'll, I'll feel like real down on myself, but other people will think I'm like super confident and I'm just like. I could turn it on when I go on stage, but bro, I'll get off stage after a set. People be like, "Oh, it's funny." Bro, the whole car ride home, I'm like, "Bro, you suck. <laughs> you suck. You suck, bro. You How need to dare you get on that quit. stage? You need to quit this comedy, yeah. bro. You know how many times I've been in my car like, you you should have just went to get the PhD, buddy. <laughs> you should have went. You should have did more college, and you yeah. should have just got the. You should have got out, bro. Just be funny at the meetings. <laughs> yeah, you know just be that just, funny friend. Yeah, just be that. Yeah. You know what I mean, because bro, I've been I've been the funny supervisor for like over a decade at my job, bro. Like I've been. <laughs> they don't know. You know, bro, you know me and my students be on my Instagram funny boss i ever had i'm just like could that be enough like yeah. why do i need to also be a comedian <laughs> like that shit is you know it's crazy but i think it's good i think the video part is good because also people like seeing Reactions people who remind them yeah. also but people who remind them of their homies 
Oh, that's true. The relatability yeah. part of it. That's what I started realizing with stand up. I think that's when my shit changed. Like the last like two, like last two and a half years, like, the biggest change, bro, was that like I started realizing people want to feel like they're your friend. People people want to feel like you're a homie yeah. that they've known, right? For so like years and yeah. Shit. So people who watch this podcast, they they know they know somebody like you or somebody like your guest that. They'd be like, yo, that reminds me of when like I used to talk to so and so about X, Y, and Z. Like they want to feel like it relates to them or they they connect to it. Yeah. So I tell people, people be like, yo, how'd you describe your comedy? I'd be like, I want people to feel like I'm their friend they haven't seen in like a couple months. And we're like at a function. We had a cookout. We had a party. We're joking around. And I got yeah. you and I got you by like the food or something where it's not loud. And I'm just like, yo, bro, I told you about when I went on that vacation, what happened on the plane? And they'd be like, nah, what happened on a plane? <laughs> and then you tell them, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I want people to feel like that when I'm on stage. And I think that, that that connection, people feel that. So I think with podcasts, when you add the video element, because they can see you too, you just remind them of people they know. And That's true. I think it brings them in, bro. So I think, man, kudos to you, bro. Because it's, it's, it, it's not, hey, it's not easy to get the shit, the audio done. It's not easy to get video. <laughs> it's not easy, bro. Especially because I'm a one man team myself. Like, like you were saying, bro. I do everything. That I record and I edit video. Yeah. Everything. So the clips, the fucking, the little, you know, the pictures and bro, everything. Figuring out who you're gonna have come on. You know what I'm saying? Who you're gonna dealing have with? People guests. who are like, yeah, yeah, and then never come. You know, it's like yeah. it's not easy. I'll just get the like the finished product. 100 behind the scenes sucks. That's sometimes. what kills me about stand up, bro. Is like I'll be working on a joke for like months, a year. You'll do a joke, right? And then, like, afterwards, somebody be like, oh, man, I like when you said blah. I would have said za. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, that's cool, bro. But you would have said za after you heard me said blah. You yeah. didn't have an idea. I got on stage in front of yeah. people and bombed for three months before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to go up there by myself and not be funny and have people look at me like, oh, that's stupid. And then, like, not quit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Bro, I did stand up once. Yeah. Me and my boy... Um, we were like, yo, we should do stand up. You know, we we crack jokes and shit. And we came out with the routine and everything. Yeah, and we did it in front of some some friends, and they thought it was hilarious. But I was like, but y'all are friends, like, yeah. you know us, so you kind of like maybe not feel like it's funny, but like it's funny that we're doing it. Yes. You know what I mean? And then I was like, yo, we got we we went to a bar. And I was like, oh, can we do stand up here? You know, like one night for yeah. free. And the owner was like, yeah, go ahead, you you go ahead. So he let us. It was like four people having dinner. And we we're like, yo, what's up? And then some girl goes, woo! And my boy was like, boo, bitch, boo, you. <laughs> I was like, nah, we see, we off to a best. <laughs> Bro, it's, it's different. I think wh where so it was like, what kind of function was it when you did the the first joint for your friends? It was like at like a little get together. No, nah, like, like at, 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 at somebody's house, somebody's crib. So you yeah. just do like a show on your own, like you yeah. Like we're like, yo, sit down. That's, we we came up with this. Like, let us that. know what you think. Really? They're like, yeah, shit's fun. You're gonna kill. But the thing is, like, we didn't go somewhere where it's comedy. Yeah. It was a restaurant. Yeah. And was slash bar. And he was like, yeah, go ahead. You can go and jump on stage and do your little act while people eat. And, I mean, kudos to us for even going up there. Because that, yeah, was, that was what I was going to say. I mean, that's really, hard. <laughs> you probably ex you experienced exactly what comedy is when you start. I experienced uh, killing like, yeah, or yeah. fucking bombing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. Here's, it's crazy because you see how good it feels when, when there's a room full of people who are supportive and laughing. Yeah, yeah. And then you feel what it's like when there's a room full of people who they just want to eat dinner. <laughs> They're like, you know what bro. Uh, and that's how comedy is though you get excited like the like the first couple of shows you do everybody wants to go yeah everybody wants to see you everybody's just so proud that you would get up on stage and do it or that you would think to do it like they're like oh man i can see this this makes so much sense and then when those people you know they can't go every night yeah now you at a bar <laughs> with or random a strangers with random strangers yeah. and they kind of like you know i do shows like that all the time bro i've been in mission valley at a random bar like next to like right next to an in and out just like kicking it and there's just regulars in there and they just want to drink their little drink and be sad because life is hard and they there after work and <laughs> they live in san diego yeah and they hear you come up on stage just like hey guys let me tell you about my week and they're just like fuck you like you know Bro, like, like i'm contemplating suicide you over here bro. fucking jody joke jokes bro but then it's crazy they be really they be really contemplating real life shit and then you go up there and joke about real life shit yeah. like it's just you know it's those are the environments though like it's not always a comedy club comedy clubs mm. are great because it's like everybody paid money to go watch comedy to go laugh yeah or like a or like a um like a secret show or an independent show where like everybody who bought tickets knows they're going to a gym to watch comedy like it's not they're not you know they didn't show up to go to the gym and there's yeah. comedy like like we reserved the space and we got the chairs they know why they're going yeah exactly you know yeah. what i'm saying but if you had a restaurant or a bar 
You and might not know there's comedy that. And then some dude pops up on the stage like, "What's he gonna do?" Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So oh, you, you think he's funny? <laughs> so realistically, you you really got the you got the real the real experience, bro. Yeah, I mean, it, unfortunately, we didn't continue. I yeah. think that really like killed it for us. We we're like, "Fuck, man, that shit sucked." <laughs> like, bro. You gonna keep doing that? Like, yeah. <laughs> and I know it's like two person team, and like you know, comedy is really just like one really one person there's yeah, yeah. some acts that could do it like big famous ones but that's not easy nah it's not easy you gotta have, so, you gotta have a certain chemistry and like you gotta yeah. know what you're doing up there together it's definitely hard more and more people are trying to do like the two person on stage thing i think it works if you're um if you're both in tune with each other and like you also know each other's comedy and material right then you can let the other person flow into their actual stuff even though it doesn't feel like it's their material, it's material. And like they know what they're doing and you know what they're doing. So you let them rock. You might have heard their joke so many times where you could tag something to help them out. Yeah. And you're there to help them, you know. But, but that's over experience, yeah, time together and shit. Time. It's not it's not easy. That thing sure. about comedy, bro, you just you, realistically, especially if you're in a scene like you do shows with a lot of the same people over and over again. You get to a point where you know their jokes. <laughs> You're like, oh, here comes, know, a, here comes a punchline. Bro, I'll be at shows so many times, bro. I'll be especially people who are my homies that like I want to see them do good. And I know they're working something out. Like I'll be in the back, like hanging out, and I'll be seeing them do their joke, and I'll be like getting excited, like here we go, here we go, here we go. And if it goes good, I'll be like, let's go. And when it <laughs> don't hit, I just be like, mm, I wish they were like, damn, like they wouldn't do yeah. this, or you know what I'm saying? Then you just go talk to the homie and, and work through it, you know. Like, I've had uh, it happen to me where I've had ideas where I thought something was funny and I was working on it, and one of my boys would come up to me and be like, yo, you know the joke about the funeral? If you said X, Y, and Z, bro, I think that should be funny. And you'd be like, damn, I might not say it exactly like you, but I know what I could do with it. So that's what, yeah, that, that, the, the comedy shit is like, it's collaborative too. So the fact that even you and your boy was like, we're going to all from the rip, all we're going to do this together, yeah. I think is, um, is actually like really brave because it's, it's almost <laughs> harder to do it that way. And I'm terrified of public speaking, bro. Yeah. But I've always been one of those dudes is like, if I have to do something, even if I don't want to do it or if, like I'm terrified, I'm just going to do it and I'll be the first one like class like yo come present i'm like yo i'm first like yeah. i just want to get it done with yeah. like get people, it i want to sit back in the back after i'm after i'm like yeah but people destroy. like people like you are dangerous because you because you want to get it done with and there's all the adrenaline and the nerves going through you a lot of times you go up first and you do really good you know what i'm saying <laughs> and then you stress everybody yeah. out after you oh shit, which is real? actually there yeah. i mean when you know it's happening it's actually like one of the most fun things to watch like somebody have a hard time because you did good oh, like the, oh man saying. that shit i didn't know i care i didn't know i liked that feeling like when i was in like school and it would happen i didn't really get it and then like the more i did comedy i was like oh it's kind of fun like when you do good and someone has to like follow you yeah it's like oh that's fun <laughs> like i got mad at one of my homies because like um my best friend like he couldn't pick a best man at his wedding like he couldn't decide shout out to francis you know this is about you he he <laughs> He couldn't pick a best man. Like he, was, mind you, he was my best man. Well, let y'all see off the, right yeah. there, Francis. I don't know you. Yeah, you know I'm saying that's. But my I feel dog. like you yeah. broke. I, you I, broke code. I love him. I love him. That's my dog. The thing about him is like he's like everybody's big brother. Like he's oh, like okay. everybody's big homie. Like everybody loves him. He's just like he looks out for you. Type of dude. Like you know, what I mean, you stuck. Like you don't got a car. Like when I, especially when I was broke, young, like fresh out of high school, college. Like if I was ever stuck somewhere, I get on the phone, call my man Francis. I like yo, Francis. I'm stuck X place, yo. He'd be like, bro, I got you. Because, yo, you know, back in the day, pre-Uber, you used to have to call people to help you. You know what I'm saying? Pre-Uber, pre-Google Maps. You used to have to be like, yo, I'm stuck X, Y. And they'd be like, where you at? You'd be like, yo, you know where the Shell gas station is? Across the street from the Vons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go two streets down, right? (laughs) Yo. and (laughs) When you see the crackhead, make it right. Yeah, that's the type of directions you had to give. And he would pull up and take care of me. That was my dog. He's like a couple years older than me. So... But yeah, he was my my best man because like I just trusted him. And I was like I could trust Francis, um, and so when it was his turn, he had a lot of guys that like he's close with that I think they were kind of like I think he had a pressure of who he's gonna pick, uh, so he couldn't yeah. really pick. And so when it came down to it, I was cool with. That. I was like, whatever, we're all in the wedding. It's all love. These are all guys I'm cool with. Then I found out when we were doing the speeches at the reception. He wasn't picking like one guy to do a speech. He was gonna let all of us talk. Like we were oh, each gonna get to go. Like a lineup of yeah. speeches. So in my head, I'm going, mind you, at this point, I already live in California. I've been doing stand-up probably like four or five years. So to me, I'm like, I'm going last. I'm going to go up. I'm going to do the closer. My, yeah, I'm going to close it out. <laughs> like, I'm going to go up. I'm a, I'm, yeah, like, I'm going to go up. I'm going to make the bride feel beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to make a couple people, I'm going to shit on him, make people laugh. Like, I'm like, we got this in the bag. We're good to go. I'm ready to go. Bro, when I tell you, he, sh- he it was like going to a show and getting the lineup and be like, hold up, wait, hold up, wait. Whoa, <laughs> where, 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 yeah, yeah. I was like, 
<laughs> yo, bro, he, he stuck me in the middle. Like he had like he had a he had like a couple of dudes go who like really didn't want to even give a speech. He had me go, and then he had like another one of our uh, homies that went up together that really didn't want to give a speech. They get uncomfortable giving speeches, and he knows this. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I, when I tell you, I went up there so mad. And I did that, but I was so happy when I did the speech, bro. I walked back to the table. My wife was sitting at the table. I walked back to the table and dead ass, like at a wedding. This is how, sometimes in my head, I'm like, yo, you're a weirdo. I literally got to the table, looked at my wife. I was like, I ain't no fucking middle. Like, I was like, I was mad, bro. I was like, I'm supposed to go last. The hell's wrong with you? Call my fucking Asian. This is bullshit. I was mad as hell, bro. And that shit, like, man, I was, mm, that's, and that's the thing, though. You get like, you, you, when you're comfortable or like you even if you're not like sometimes if you just naturally have that ability like i would imagine even if you was nervous back when you'd have to give a presentation or something because you're good at speaking and you're comfortable with people at a certain point as long as you know what you're talking about you could get it out and yeah do a good yeah. job and it's funny to be like the nervous person but do good because everybody else is like well hold up if he didn't even want to do it <laughs> but that's the <laughs> that's the motivation yeah. like yeah and shout out to my communications class in high school because he would make us do some awkward shit like he got us to go on the senior lawn and perform a song. Bro. Like if we were in a video and I picked back that ass up. Let's go. I had the bandana. I was throwing Monopoly money in the yeah. crowd. Like I had the homie <laughs> turning down the bad parts and yeah, you know yeah. the bad words and shit. But I was terrified, bro. When I That's tell you, funny. I did not want to do that. But I was like, I just I, gotta do I it. I think I think teachers know. Sometimes teachers be known, especially like when they teach in the hood. I think sometimes they know when they gotta like help. Or like give you a chance to do some shit that maybe would make maybe be tough, but like it's good for you. Yeah, they like gotta tough find a way love to do it. Shit. Yeah, yeah, like I remember I was in in middle school. We I used to do da- I used to have dance class. Right, it was like it was my arts thing. I had dance, but I didn't mind dance because like when I was in middle school, all the all the all the fine Dominican chicks was all Same, you know what I'm saying it was all in dance <laughs> class. <laughs> you know, right? you know what's up. <laughs> so I remember it was a funny thing is that like we did these cultural dances, and the way they set it up was like. There were so many Dominicans in my class. Like, we did it all by country. You know what I'm saying? So, when we got to the Dominican joints. So we're all going to be dancing bachata and all that. And they go, like, in my head, I'm going, all right, let's see how they're going to break. It's a lot of us. And our teacher was a savage, bro. She took, like, all the, like, fat or, like, not popular kids <laughs> and put them with all the finest girls. Oh, that's what's up. Shout bro, out to that teacher. I don't know who you are. And then she took, you know what I'm saying? She took the girls that wasn't the more popular girls and she they made them dance with all the dudes who was, like, you know, future drug dealers of America. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. them dudes. Like, the and, tight pants. I bro, got you. Oh, man. I was hype. I was like, yo, this lady really looked out for us right now. Because no matter what, we're going to be all right because we got, like, the cool girls is dancing. We're going to, like, it's going to be vibes, you know? So, I think some teachers in the hood, bro, they look they look out because they just know they know what what could really go left for you, and they're just trying to do their best to help you. So to ch- try to keep it even and shit. yeah, try to just give you a little opportunity for something, man. And it's that's funny you it. said that about the class because you're like that's where all the Domin- the finance Dominicans. Yeah. I was telling my girl because I know how to sew and shit, and she's like, "How do you know how to sew?" I was like, "One, well, my mom, but two, I took home economics." Like, bro. she's like, "You took home economics?" I was like. Where do you think the girls were at? You think they were at the wood shop? If they were at the wood shop, that's not the kind of girl I want to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the home ex yeah, yeah. learning how to make these cupcakes with these hoes and shit. Bro. Say what you think I'm trying to build shelving units with these. <laughs> Say what you think this these is. These flannel wearing nah, nah, these flannel what you mean? wearing IKEA going ass bitches. I don't got the time. Nah, I want I want fucking Susie who's gonna yeah, yeah. learn how to bake shit. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. You got to work smarter, not harder. You know Facts. what I'm saying? I think, yeah, man, school. I think that's the the one thing is um, funny about school is that, like, you just, when you're there and you're a kid and you're young, you don't know how life's going to go for you. Right. And you just, and I remember, like. That's a beautiful thing, though. It's crazy because, like, you just, you just having a time. And even if you broke and you go to a bad school, you got all your friends there, whatever, no matter what. If you're we're all weird, broke together. We're all broke together. Everybody, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody on reduced lunch together. Everybody broke. You know what I'm saying? And it's a it's a cool experience because you don't know how it's going to end up. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because back in the day, you would be done with school and you might never see people for like years and years. And then with social media now, it's like you can't get away from people. <laughs> and I just think about my mom and stuff. because like my mom will talk to me about people she knew in high school or will be out because my mom's like really not on social media like that. Like we'll be out somewhere when I'm back home and she'll see a, she'll see this lady at a grocery store and I'm like, Ma, who's that? She's like, oh my God, we went to middle school together. I haven't seen her in 20 years, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, that's crazy that that would happen because like, that's just how it used to be back in the day. And then with us, 
you I always know what's happening with people I went to like high school with. Yeah. Even if they live in a whole other state, I'd be knowing everything. I know like what their kids look like. I know what their like, <laughs> I know what their husband drive. You just see their whole life basically yeah, on social, on social media. media yeah, but yeah. back in the day, I think when we were kids, we didn't know that this was gonna be a thing where you could like keep up with people on a computer. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Was, and I, I can only imagine now being a kid and like you you have access to all this social media. You're on TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram and all this, and you're like twelve. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, the way like the way you could be these kids, you could be way more mean to people, and like it's yeah, just different I, I, with the social media. I can't imagine having. I don't have kids, so I just I always think about like, ugh, having kids got to be tough now. Because back in the day, we didn't have that. Back in the day, it was yeah. just like, oh yo, I heard you said something about me. We fighting. <laughs> when tomorrow after school and behind the behind the yeah. building and now it's like yeah. you're like yeah when I catch you and then you go on social media yeah when I see Derek like and then, <laughs> and then they see each other and they're like man like, and then go online he's lucky yeah, he, lucky, he didn't yeah. fucking bump into me yeah this is that different, bro like and it's I I just I never would have thought like I just thought high school reunions would be more important I never went to any I never went to none because I remember when mine came up everyone was like high school reunion da 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 and I was just like bro we already know. Cause that was the whole thing with high school reunions is you are supposed to go to see who got kids, yeah. oh, who got that's fat, what? who's ugly. You know what I'm saying? Like you are supposed to go to find <laughs> yeah. out some shit. You know Facebook got me. Yeah, I don't now need you, you know. I knew all that stuff. I was like, why am I going back to find yeah. out what? Like I'm good. I'm not. I don't got nothing to learn here. Like <laughs> I didn't go because I was like I didn't like y'all in high school to begin with. Hey. I don't think I will like you now. Bruh. So we'll just save that and not go to that. <laughs> Bruh, I, like that shit was. I remember for me, like thinking back on like it's funny doing stand up because everybody be like. Oh, you must have been class clown or whatever. I'm just like, no. I know kids in high school that was way funnier than me. They just all got locked up or did stupid shit. They just they was funny because they was the most reckless kids. Right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's like, true. and for me, I was still funny, but I was funny like, but I wasn't trying to get kicked out of school. Yeah, like you know my mom like, whooped my ass, yeah, so I had like, to like draw a line of how crazy I'm gonna act. And bro, shit. I got kicked out of a class once. It's crazy. I I very rarely got in trouble because I was like I know what I'm here for. Like I'm just going to school, whatever. I was in a I had a Spanish class because that was just how it all went. Like you know I spoke Spanish. You still in Spanish? So I'm <laughs> in there not paying attention and shit. Our teacher Miss Mendez is she was in her bag that day. I was passing notes with a friend. We was chopping it up. Gotcha. Yeah, she caught us right, and then she really snapped on me. And she'll never get mad at me because I usually just be chilling. I be doing my work. I'm cool. She snapped on me, and I and I got bold that day, and I and I made a comment about how she must be on her time or whatever. <laughs> Cause like you know what I'm saying, yeah. I'm at the, I, I, I got, love that. Yeah, I got crazy with it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, <laughs> I was like 16. I was like, you know, you know what? Let me tell this grown woman how she acting like she on her fucking period right now. Her hormones are yeah, kicking, bro. So I, I fired off, you know, check. Cause I just felt like she came at me crazy, so I got bold. Everybody was like, oh, like, and then she kicked me out. She was like, you need to go to the principal's office. And one of the kids in the back of the class, who you know, was, he wasn't gonna graduate. He goes. Damn, miss, let me walk him to the principal's office. Rui don't get, he don't even know how to get there. Like, <laughs> let me walk him, you know what I'm saying? And everybody in class dying. And I always think about that kid because I'm just like, bro, that dude was funny, bro. Like, yeah. he, was probably, he was a class clown, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's always funny when you look back at, like, growing up, like, people assume that certain personalities, it would lead you a certain way. It's like, no, I just like talking and telling jokes and telling stories, but I didn't. I also was scared of my mom whooping my ass. Facts, bro. People, I told my girl that she's like, were you scared of your dad or your mom? I was like, my dad died when I was young, but my dad was the one who let me get away with shit. Mm. Like, I got I got kicked out of class and I needed him to sign because yeah. he would drop me off. I was like, yo, pop, sign this. He wouldn't even read it. He'd just be like, all right. That's so I always got away with everything, but my mom's, I had to walk a thin, like a straight line because she was not on some bullshit. Yo, I was like, yo, I was terrified of mom's. My man. mom was on. My mom be on. She was on both times. My mom also bipolar she's been through a lot for right now god bless she's been holding it together for many years now she ain't had no episodes but that shit was real so like that must have been rough she, bro she'd be your best friend bro and then she'll snap on you too like within so, like seconds right yeah especially the times when, my, when i was really young when my mom was really trying to like get it under control and they was trying to figure it out for her yeah it was tough bro because the man the swings bro because bipolar is like you get you get the crazy you can get crazy excited and manic and then, and then mad. Boom, super depressive and mad or whatever and think everybody's out to get you you know what I mean? Like, and I don't talk about it a lot because I love my mom and I don't ever want to make her like, I don't want anybody to think like my mom was, uh, you know, crazy or whatever. So, I, but my mom went through a lot of shit. She's been good. Luck, I mean, God bless like the last 20 years. She's been real good and like all the meds she's on is cool. But when I was a kid, my mom was like, she could be your best friend and she'd be down with you and she'll like help you rob a bank or she'll beat your ass because <laughs> you robbed the bank you. right afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She'd be like, did you rob that bank? You're like, you was there. And she'd be like, like, nah, nah, no way. <laughs> my mom was, my dad, he just talked, man. My dad would just talk, talk, talk. He would sit you down and just be like, 
why did you do this? And like, he talked to the point where you're like, all right, yo, can can you just get mom to beat my ass? Like, cause we, this <laughs> yo, is taking forever. This is worse. Like. Bro, yeah. And so my mom was, just, she was the really the enforcer, but my mom also had a soft spot. So like, if I, if I messed up in school or something, my mom would hide the report card from my dad. <laughs> oh, you know, okay. My dad would find out like two quarters later, like he even doing bad in this class. And my mom's like, I, I don't know. I, like you didn't, I could have been told yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> my, mom, my mom was like, yeah. you know, she was like the enforcer and the one who let you get away with stuff too. So it was like a, it was a wild thing. But yeah, growing up, my mom bipolar was like, it was different. You know what I'm saying? But I was young. So like when you're young, bro, you just, I'm a mama's boy. I just want to protect my mom no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So if they if they thought my mom was acting up, I was just like, nah, my mom's good. We talking about like, I would defend Watch my mom. Watch your mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I defend my mom through anything. So like, I that's thing is crazy. Like being like, you know, 12, 13 and like your mom's going through some shit that she probably should really get some help right now. But you're like, nah, because I you remember, really don't really understand. Yeah, either. bro, because I was little when I was my first time my mom ever went to like a little like mental thing, like mental institution type thing for a little bit, like, you know, to get like taken care of. And like, you know, for like a month or something, I was like seven, eight. And my mom was just gone for like a month. You know what I'm saying? And my grandma's around and my dad's working. and He's there. But like so then I knew that she went away once. So the second time when she had a really bad episode, I was like, oh, nah, not this time, because in my head, I'm grown now. I'm like almost in high school. Yeah. I'm like, nah, you're not gonna take my mom. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm doing everything to ride for my mom, no matter what, no matter how wild the shit she's saying is. Like yeah. my mom be like, my mom will come home and be like, I, Abuela and your tias, they're trying, they're trying to like, um, she's like, they're trying to like, like commit me. They're trying to get me to like an insane asylum or whatever. And I'm like, ma, you're tripping. She's like, no, they're out to get me. Da da da. Like we like, my mom's like, we're going to your grandmother's house. My dad's mom. She's like, we're going to, we're going to your, your grandmother's house. And I'm like, all right, whatever. And then my mom's like packing a book bag and she's like throwing the house phone in it. She's like, I don't want them calling the house. I'm like, what are we doing? And I'm just like, nah, this all makes sense. Like, let's yeah. get on the bus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the yeah, cool yeah, mom. Yeah, let me get the charger in case you want to plug it in at the other house. Yeah. Like, and you just don't know. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just think that's like super normal. But yeah, I always been super protective of my mom because of that, bro. Like always, 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 always. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, it's facts. it's hard though. You know what I'm saying? I think the other part too. I think like growing up, like like my mom's my mom's Dominican, my dad's Portuguese. It's like all my Latino comes from my mom, and so like they're very like my mom's like takes care of me like a prince. You know what I'm saying? Oh uh, right. Yeah, always took care, always look out for me, like treat me like you know like precious. You know what I'm saying? Like she always take care of me, make sure I'm good. So I've always wanted to take care of my mom. That's like one of the biggest things. It's funny because like. When my, I love when my mom comes to comedy shows because she'd be so excited. Like when I, especially when I go back home and I'll do a show. And like usually if I go home and do a show, a lot of people come out because I don't go home like that often. My mom want to go to the shows and she literally wants to like talk to people after the show. Like, hi, I'm Rui's mom. Like she's just like so proud and shit. That's and so up. that's the type of shit where like my mom, I'm like, damn, like bro, I really can't wait to like really like make it, make it because like it's gonna be dope to like have a special and at the end like you know what I mean throw up some pictures of my mom or you She's know like, oh, I do you know what I mean yeah when right I you know mean? like yeah, when I'm yeah. doing like big shows like bring my mom out at the end of the show or whatever like those are the things for me I'm like bro I can't wait you know what I'm saying like get my mom if I someday you know what I'm saying I get to be like the rock you know what I'm saying have a lot of money <laughs> remember Kevin Hart was <laughs> yeah, the rock so you finally oh you finally bought your mom <laughs> he's like all right we've got a lot of five houses. billion yeah, and then you finally bought her but that's a cool, that's yeah. like a cool ass feeling like even for somebody like the rock who's like a famous super mega star right like he's still hyped to buy his mom some shit so i definitely want to have that type of uh experience at some point in fact, you know yeah. what i'm saying because even if you end up a little financially a little bit ahead of your parents or whatever which is cool you want to be like the next level so hopefully someday i could do that shit for my mom bro yeah like my mom be bragging about me to like my cousins in mexico and shit yeah. and that's cool but it's like mom just wait just <laughs> wait you're really gonna shit on them <laughs> yeah 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 hell yeah that's the yeah, that's the energy i'll be having to talk my mom down bro my mom be wild and still i love my mom she be wild i just had to like talk my mom down because she arguing about she's not going to one of my my cousin's daughter it's her birthday or whatever it's like her sweet 16 and like she's like She's like, nah, I'm not going because the way your aunt didn't invite me to this other party, I'm just like <laughs> the pettiness. I'm like, ma, let it Latino go. Latino family, yeah, I gotta call shit. my mom. Then everybody be hitting me up because I'm like the only one who could talk to my mom. So they be like, hey, Rui, your mom says she's not going to the baby shower. Your mom says she's not going to the party. Your mom says she's not, and I gotta call my mom. Ma, What's going on? Just go to the party, please, because I'm like the only one who could like get my mom to like chill out or like ease up. She always, she always going crazy. She always spicy with it. So. Yeah, man. That's Yo, it. Yeah. My mom's the same way. Like, my cousin got married. First of all, my cousin's bugging, bro. He's been with this girl for like 27 years. They got grown kids, and he's like over here, like, Yo, cuz, we're, we're going to get married. I really like, I was like, Bro, you been with her your whole life? What you mean? Like, I'm not going. 
I'm not flying to Mexico yeah. for your wedding for somebody you've been with for like that long. And, shit. Yeah. and he was like, nah, man. I re-. And I told my mom, I was like, yo, cousin's tripping. She's like, fuck him. Like, <laughs> we're not going to that shit. Like, <laughs> what, she gonna wear a white dress? Yo, Get the fuck out of here. How old are his kids? The yeah, oldest one has to be 21. Nah, you wildin'. <laughs> you say, At bro. that point, you just gotta like. And then we having like a wedding, like, yeah. you know, like white dress. It's crazy, bro. My, like, parents, my parents never got married. Like yeah. My parents never got married. They just been together for mad long. So they never got married. And so it's funny because my mom will bring it up, like teasing my dad. Like she'll be at her job. Like, oh, your husband came to get you. She's like, my boyfriend came <laughs> to get me. You know what I'm saying? And like, and I Not told even my, fiance? God yeah, damn, nah, pops. Nah, she's like, nah, my dad, man, he be wilding. But and my mom's like, and now my mom's on some shit where she's like, I don't want it. I don't even want the ring. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's like... Uh, it's always funny to me because I'll try to tell them when we if we're planning like me and my wife if we're planning a vacation or something I'll be like hey tell my dad about like, yo y'all should just come with us and just get a little get married at the little thing just us you know what I'm saying you guys just get married or whatever because I'm like y'all been together forever you might as well just do it we're not gonna have a whole wedding now yeah because you know? like, my mom and dad was like it's hey, not be ridiculous have, we're having now. a wedding like they're gonna be like okay like <laughs> first of all. <laughs> Your son should have. Your already son's been. already married. Yeah, exactly. Like, like your son's thirty-five. There's no like, why? Why are we doing yeah. this? Yeah, that shit, man. Yeah, my parents never got married, so I just until my wife really like cared about getting married. I never even thought about it. Like not Bro, like thought of, like yo, I that's want. Facts. Like we we've been engaged for a couple a few years now, and, and we finally decide we're gonna get married this year. Yeah, and then we're like, yo, like my friends at little gatherings, like, yo, you don't trip, like you know, I was like. Bro, if she wants to get whenever she wants, man. Like, I'm just here for the ride. You know what I'm saying? Bro, like, I'm tell me you. the day and time, and I'll be there. Like, yeah, that's I'm not, deep, bro. That's, and that's, I mean, I always found like when I got married, everyone was like, "Oh, what changed?" And I was like, "I mean, like, I have to wear jewelry now." Yeah, like I got a ring now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, otherwise, like I, you know, I don't feel like me and my wife changed drastically. I think the relationship stuff you deal with before you get married, it's the same shit you deal with afterwards, bro. You still got to communicate with each other. You still got to work through problems you might have. You still got to fix, like, you still got to work on yourself. Because that's in the end. At the end of the day, bro, everything comes back to you somehow. No matter what. People be like, oh, X person's the problem, whatever. I'll be like, I promise you, look in the mirror long enough. That shit will come back around. And it probably got something to do with you and some shit. Like, you got to look. You got to work on yourself. So you still got to do all that stuff, bro. So people be tripping on the marriage thing like, oh, it's going to change everything. I'm like, it's really not going to change. I was like, it's just a piece of paper. In fact, it's really not going to change yeah. a ton of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, But, you know, people put their the societal pressure on you or what they think is like, you know, marriage or Facts. whatever. Yeah. You know what and saying? my mom's old school Mexican. So she has like these traditions. She's like, I, you know, I don't really like you guys living together. You're not married. I was like, mom, stop. Like you never married my dad. <laughs> bro. Y'all moved to a different country. You yeah. <laughs> please keep it. <laughs> yeah, so. People be, so when y'all got engaged, y'all hadn't set like a date at any point. Y'all just kind of was like, all right, it's going to happen. Yeah. I was like, like eventually. That. Bro, the long engagements are the way to go. Me and my wife were engaged for three years. We're at, we're at four. Yeah, bro. We was, so engaged, like, bro. we was chilling, man. It was cool. I liked being, and being engaged was chill, bro. It's cool to say my fiance. It's just nice. <laughs> it's a nice little vibe. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. But then when you get to like, I bet I put money. Because when I was at like year three and I'd be like, yeah, me and my fiance. And we're like, what's that wedding? Like, oh, I can't bro. even go nowhere. Like, yo. So like we went to a wedding in September and they were like, yo, so like y'all be it was like shut up bro oh, like they be pressing what do it when we do it and shit. pressing you i like that my mom finally stopped kind of like she's starting i to like wish man i just leave. had a conversation with my mom about it i think back i'm like yo good thing i didn't have no kids when i was younger god knows what would have been of that because bro my life was not together bro i remember <laughs> having a scare when i was like eight, seventeen, eighteen, 17 18 with this girl i was dating and shout out to my dog francis <laughs> what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Man, I called him up. I was Punch like, her in the stomach? Bro, or? I was like, bro, I don't know how they kicked her right down the stairs. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> this <laughs> is <laughs> Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> kicked her right down the stairs. Nah, yeah. yeah. I called him, right? And, like, he was like, he just started getting on me. He was like, hold up. You out here just raw dogging in these streets. <laughs> Raw like, doggy you know, life. You, know, you, know, you out here. It's like I know damn well you're a little just just being just done being a virgin ass. You don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> this motherfucker pull up with like the Costco size condoms, bro. He's like <laughs> he gave me like a forty pack, bro. He came through. He's like this better never happen again. But wrap that shit bro, up. I was like yeah. And he looked at me like and I know you don't be fucking like that. So this better last you like. But that's type of, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's that type of homie he was. Bro, I called him stress, and he was like, bro, this never this better never happen again. He came through he was, like taking care of that because like. Cause to me, I was like, it's not gonna happen to me. My parents had me young, bro. But 
those scares be that different. could have. And I was just talking to the the last part. I was like, it's always with the somebody you don't even want a kid with. Like fuck, I didn't even. Bro. Now you got to picture yourself like custody. I had a scare once, and I was legit calling my homie who's gone through all that shit. I was like, yo, what can I do to make sure I don't have to give this bitch no fucking money? <laughs> 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 you try to get way ahead of it. Yeah, I was like, yo, I need mean, tell me what you did. Yeah. Like, because you don't pay no child support. You got 50 50. Help me. Help me be there so I don't have to deal with this bitch. Because yeah. I, I think she's pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> and he was bro. like, breaking it down for it's me. It's scary, too, because, like, it, it's just. I don't know if you felt this when you had a, when you had the scare, but like you don't just look at them; you start looking at like their whole family, Bruh. bro. Because like that's your that's like you like you could say what you want. People be like eighteen years. It's not eighteen years. It's bro. life. It's life, dog. Yeah. That's a sentence, bro. <laughs> they, yo, when y'all be like, I don't listen. I don't know what kind of white people. Well, like you know, white people, y'all be disowning your kids. You At know eighteen, saying? they're like, yeah, they're eighteen. Like, good luck, Trevor. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Latinos don't do that. Nah, bro, Latinos don't get. Nah, you. It's for life, dog. <laughs> for life, the, your in laws, everybody. The, you're, you're attached for life, and that's you all couldn't even not be together and they're gonna judge you like bro i haven't been with your fucking bro, niece or I whatever was, bro i was at my grandfather's funeral bro in this in september one of my cousins he got a couple of baby moms he had been with the one baby mother who's who's most recent for a while but they kind of on the rocks or whatever now we at the funeral his oldest son's there with that baby mom his his current girl she's there with the other two kids and whatever and you know everybody's being cool everybody's being cordial but we all know that other family like we know her because she <laughs> no matter what for life she's part of the family yeah. too you know what i'm saying but should be real bro the the, the baby mom and stuff is real because like nobody really knew my cousin and his current girl was going through a little thing but his mom blowing up all the spots like ah you know they're not really together right now and i'm just like damn like abuelo's in the casket right there why are we talking yeah, like, about this bro hey, yo, like, Thea, relax ease up bro like and yo you, you can't it's a life sentence bro Facts. so so for me that's the shit I, I you start looking at like their whole family you're like, damn, I'm going to deal with this, the mom or the dad or the sister or the who. That's for life, bro. Because look, bro. Always, you're always going to be a piece of shit. Being married is different, bro. Yeah. Being married with no kids, I don't care what nobody say. I've been through hard times with my wife. I'm going to tell you right now. If shit go left when you're married, the other, her family, that they be calling you cuz and bro <laughs> and all this. Yeah. That's all cool. But if you get yeah. divorced or some shit or y'all don't have to get no more, hey, bro, they... They ain't your bro and your cuz no more. And <laughs> you, you just that you, you just that bum. Yeah, and you can't be mad at that. But when y'all got kids together, even if they call you a bum or whatever, they still gotta see you at all yeah. the cookouts. They gotta see you at the function. They gotta hear about you. Hundred percent. They gotta yeah. hear about you picking up the kids, whatever the case is. So when you have a kid, that's really life. So like for me, if I got somebody on my wife's side that I'm not the coolest with or whatever. I just gotta not hang out with them. Yeah, and the ones who I'm them. cool with, that's that's love. You know what I'm saying? Like my some of my, my wife's uncles, man, they're they're the homies. Like we got a family cruise in April with her whole like a whole bunch of people from her dad's yeah, that's side. What's up. I can't wait to kick it with her uncles and shit on a cruise ship. They're gonna be getting drunk. They're gonna be at the club. They man, they be last time I went on a family cruise, they was the whole time they was in a club in a cruise ship every night. And they was like, Hey Rue, you gotta come down here. You got some things in here, you gotta come <laughs> you see some things. things. <laughs> I'm like, what are we talking about? <laughs> And then we get like, like you know I'm like, with your knees, right? Like, they're like, they're like, hey man, I told you about this crazy bitch with the red hair. Look at this bitch in here every, <laughs> every night with her shoes off. She dirty, she dirty. Like I'm like, bro, but I love them. You know what I'm saying? But if I had, if me and my wife had a kid though, even if we got divorced, like that kid is gonna be. It ties your two families together yeah, for life. And I think that's that. I definitely think maybe that's more a Latino thing though. Facts. Because I think like Latinos, like the family thing is like. I don't know how it goes with other cultures, but like Latinos, I feel like once you have a kid, it's like people, they're around forever. There's no going back on it. There's no ducking it. Americans, whatever race, it'd be a little different. I've seen my aunt get divorced and with her husband, who's like, he's half white, half black. And I've seen it where like, I ain't seen that dude in years. And I've been to his kids' birthdays. You know what I'm saying? Like, and nobody yeah. asking questions, nobody care, but like, the Latinos be asking. Yeah, like, hey, so, what? so what happened with the... Yeah, his family be at the party not even asking where he is. Like, I'm just like, that's how y'all get down? Yeah. Like, Latinos be like, oh, what time so is like, gonna is be Is there here? a chance for yeah. bringing it back? Reconciliation yeah, like, what do we do? So, yeah, man. I don't know, bro. I, I, I'm sure if you was asking your homie how you're gonna get this... this it was serious, bro. Serious, yeah, man. That shit's <laughs> scary, bro. I was trying to get ahead of the game. I was like, yo, 
I'm going to go for 100%. Like, I was trying to, like, think of ways to prove to the judge <laughs> that she is an unfit mother, bro. <laughs> Yo. I, I was, started taking, like, evidence from her house. I was just watching the, um this movie on Netflix, You People. Oh, it's I want to see that. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. Jonah Hill and uh, Lauren, Lauren London. Yeah. It. yeah, and Mike Epps got some scenes in there where he talked oh, about. Oh, Mike Epps is hilarious. Bro, Mike Epps is one of the funniest people ever, bro. Mike Epps got a scene. It don't give nothing away in the movie, but he talk, He literally talks about how he's trying to, uh, he got he got, a, he got a criminal record or whatever, and Eddie Murphy's his brother, he's like, man, you got, he's like, mom didn't raise you to be no criminal. He's like, I'm not a criminal. It was a peeping Tom charge. He's like, what do <laughs> you mean peeping Tom? He's like, he's like, I was trying to catch my baby mama. I was trying to catch my baby mama cheating. He's like, what? He's like, yeah, I was trying to get the judge to lower my child support <laughs> <laughs> that's not how it works and like it's just the fact that i know nobody yeah. wrote that in the script mike epps had this this crazy ass idea that if he catches baby mama being a hoe i'm gonna loo- i'm gonna lower my go, payments yeah i'm gonna yeah. go to the judge they're gonna bring my payments down because like why would i be paying full price if my baby mama a hoe yeah. what like, your honor <laughs> your honor if anything your honor why does my kid need clothes your honor his baby his mama a hoe baby. Like, <laughs> she got like four different dudes yeah, she can be getting yeah, clothes yeah. from that shit epps is funny bro that shit yeah that it's you, scary, bro. You keep up with like comedians, like the famous ones and shit like that, like yeah, their podcasts sure. or whatever. Yeah, I try to as much as I can. It's I try to watch. I've got to a point where I try to watch a little less of their specials and like actual stand up because sometimes you catch yourself inherently just taking it on. Like you start to like. I used to do that a lot because I because I really like Kevin Hart and I liked especially like when he was like. Before he got mega star Kevin Hart, but like seriously funny, laugh on my pain. Those Kevin were hilarious, Hart. man. Yeah, like at that point, like before I ever thought about stand up, those were like some of my favorite things. And I found myself at one point, I was doing a lot of, I wasn't trying to be Kev, but like I was talking certain ways and certain things. Uh, like, the mannerisms yeah, you, you catch and shit yourself, like that. And you say a lot of stuff, man. Like like uh, Kevin Hart would always say, listen, people, yeah. listen, people. And I'd be on stage saying, people, I'm like, why am I saying people right now? What am I doing? Like, how yeah, is this happening? That's even giving her. What am I doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so it's like we're trying to learn. <laughs> yeah. So, it can't, so like, I I try to watch. Um, I like watching pods. Like, I love Andrew Schultz. Like, he's like one of my I'll favorites. Them, yeah. Like, and um, I, I watch can't their stand pods. his little. Is his Indian friend the one from your school, man? I <laughs> oh, you don't know, like Akash? Uh, he be he be. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I I hear it and uh, and it's me. Like yeah, when yeah. he be. He be because he grew up in Texas, so he yeah. has like these little comments about Mexicans uh, that are like unnecessary. Like the jokes, like whatever they're talking about has nothing to do with like. I haven't seen the Akash being like super crazy with Mexicans. I gotta peep this. I gotta pay more. attention. He's not to like him. all the time, but like, like sometimes he, he just like gay. sneaks it in. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, Yo, that shit wasn't necessary, bro. Nah, like I'm gonna have to, that. I'm gonna have to and, talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's cool. Like I met so when Andrew was doing um, Guy Code, that's when I first seen him, and I was like, Yo, this dude's mad funny or whatever. And I saw he did stand up. And this is like maybe two or three years before I ever even did comedy. He was going to this. Oh, this is a while ago. Yeah, it's yeah. a while ago, bro. He was, he was going. This is like probably like 20, call it 2013, 2014, around there maybe, 2015, something like that. Um, close to like, yeah, like right around when I was about to start. So it probably was like 13, 14. Um, he, he was doing a show at a casino in Connecticut. And I hit him on Twitter and I was like, man, I wrote, I was like, should I go to this Andrew Schultz comedy show? And he, he wrote back to me. He was like, yeah, you need to come to the show. Like, pull up. So I, I get tickets, I go to the show. After the show, I meet him or whatever. And I, and I started talking, I was like, yeah, yeah, we talked on too. He's like, you the dude I told to come to the show? You was asking me, you live in Rhode Island? I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, bro, thanks for coming out, whatever. And I was like, all right, he probably just bullshitting that he remembered or whatever. And then on IG, we started DMing, talking every now and again, especially when I first started stand-up, I'll hit him up or whatever. He always was just cool. Like he'd answer questions, we would chop it up. Cool dude. And then um, when I moved to San Diego, he just started getting, he just started blowing up. So he was doing shows at um american comedy company in the gas lamp and it was like when he first started selling out shows so like i was on snapchat getting videos of the line outside and i sent it to him and he was like bro send me that video right now so i sent him the video whatever he reposted on his stories and shit and i'm telling my wife i'm like i'm like bro, i can't wait to see the guy she's like eh, he probably he's just being nice oh, and i'm man. like ah oh, yeah and then we get in line to go take pictures or whatever and when i walk up to say what's up to him before I even take a step up the stage, this dude goes, Rui, what's good, bro? Good to see you. Oh, that's what's up. And I'm just like, bro, this guy is different, bro. And he's just been like that ever since, bro. Like, I DM with him on occasion. We DM. Like, I'll post, like, a happy birthday shout out to him. He reposts that shit if that's I buy merch. He just, he's a good ass dude, bro. Like, and even funny shit. Like, I've tried to get, like, when I was back east one time, I tried to get on a show in Connecticut with him. And the booker was just like, nah, man. Like, we're not popping you in on the show. And, like, I sent him <laughs> screenshots and we laughed about it. He's like, you got to put that work in, bro. You got to put that work in and get them spots. And, like, he always been a, um, 
a real one like he always responds and like that's what's cool. up. yeah it's kind of crazy like because now he's like real real big but like yeah. i remember he had put out a, he had put out like a comedy album and it was like number one on itunes and i like wrote to him i was like number one bro that's crazy and he literally was like writing back to me he's like bro i can't believe any of this so like so much stuff like he would just hit me back and we would chop it up and like um i've had a couple of people put me on shows because they they knew that like i talked to him or whatever and we were cool and so i andrew man I, i'll forever like look at that guy different because like to me i look at it like someday if i have people who want to hit me up that's how i would want to treat people who are like fans you know what i'm saying like, yeah yeah and so he's a he's a real one I, I got a lot of respect for him even though he says some wild shit Cause yeah, he be out of pocket cause he ju- Yeah, it's, it's a shock value thing. And High Key's like a real smart white boy. And he grew up around a lot of brown people. And he's, you know, yeah. he's he's a little more cultured than he gives across or whatever. <laughs> I think he plays dumb a lot because he don't want people to know he's smart. Well, if you like, listen to like his other shit, you're like, damn, all right. When he's on like on Joe Rogan or yeah. when he does the shit with Charlemagne, yeah. you're like, oh, okay. Because like, on, on Flagrant, he's just like cracking jokes yeah, being funny nuts. yeah making, saying wild shit but yeah, yeah he, nah, he, he went to uh he went to uc he went to st uc santa barbara oh no shit he went to no, college no. out there his roommate was mexican like he used to go to like some like like mariachi nights and listen to me like he really like uh like he's not he's just for like, the people yeah he's just not a dumb <laughs> white boy and i think because he he really leans to the flagrant shit people get him fucked up but nah yeah. he's he's funny though yeah. but yeah his boy I keep up, yeah keep up Akash. Yeah, look, I got, I got him. I got, <laughs> I got you, bro. <laughs> but yeah, I keep up with as many, I keep up with as many um, people as I can, man. Like you know, I watch as much stuff as I can. I got my people that I'm like still fans, I guess in a way. And then like a lot of people that like now I watch and I'm like I want to work, you know, with them. You know oh what I'm yeah. Like I have acts like because I used to work. Want to com- be their peer now? Yeah, shit. man. I I used to work at the comedy store in La Jolla as a door guy, so I used to like do a lot of like shows where you open the show for like whoever's in town doing that weekend or whatever and i've had a couple chances to work with people that i like i really respect or like like um i don't know if you ever heard of mo ammer he's got this show on netflix literally called mo it's all about yeah he's like he's a yeah he's a palestinian he's funny as shit yeah funny dude like he's a he like he let me open for him for like a whole weekend at the comedy store like so guys like him bro like i would watch him do shows on netflix and then like i'm standing outside of a club with him he's smoking a cig we're talking and he's like, "Hey, bro, you're funny, man. I'm gonna have you on the rest of the weekend." I'm like, "All right, oh, that's what's up." Yeah, and like the last night, of, the last night of his shows that weekend, um, I wasn't working, so I didn't think I was gonna open. He was like, "Nah, you're good, bro. Come to the show." So I got to come to the show. I didn't have to wear my work clothes. I could go in like my regular clothes and go on stage. And then afterwards, we was taking he was taking pictures with fans or whatever. And I'm trying to be like just around, so I'm like, "Hey, I'll hold the camera. I'll take the picture or whatever. I'll take the picture with." The- and bro, he literally would grab me and be like, nah, Rui, get in the picture. Like, and he oh, would like, shit, let me get in. Yeah. dope, man. So, like, those are the guys now where I'm like, bro, I want to be like, yeah, like on there, like a peer. Like, like I, want, I want, yeah, yeah, I want them to look at me and be like, oh, this dude's like good at what he does. He's like and, one of us and shit. Yeah, he got yeah. potential. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's where I'm at with it now. But I definitely keep up. You know that's what I'm saying? What, my, the question I've been wanting to ask you, bro, who, who is like a famous comedian that you know you're funnier than? And why <laughs> is it Brandon Shaw? Brandon Shaw. <laughs> Yo, you know what's <laughs> So it's crazy. I was gonna say this about Shab, yo. Everybody hate Bre- yo. Everybody be killing Brendan Shaw. Okay, I was gonna say I don't, I don't know about it, if it's hate because it's kind of low key justified. His oh, his comedy is not like yeah. I don't think he's um. I don't even think I don't know if he believes that he's like a top tier comedian. comedian you know yeah, what I'm saying? But he's like, getting like top tier comedian like yeah. I think when yeah spots he's in the room he, he's shit. in the rooms where he's supposed to be and I think and he's just making the most of it. But the craziest thing I'll say is I have a lot of people do the same thing where they'll be like Brandon Schaub, right? Like and and, and I <laughs> like, like, you should be yeah. People are like yo, bro, come on. And the thing is crazy. So I got to open for Brandon Schaub. Oh, at the shit. La Jolla Comedy Store. Shout out to Brendan. I got to no, but I got to open for him literally <laughs> because um, he came out. So at the at the comedy store, I'll be working a popcorn machine, making popcorn, or whatever. And Shaw, there's a thing. People will be like, "Oh, he's not funny." I think he understands enough because he brings his own people with him. So like, he has to a, laugh. He has yeah. he has really good fe- a feature guy, David Lucas, who's real funny. He oh, has, he's alert. He yeah. has a lot of guys with him who are like very funny dudes. He has a good host, Justin, who he brings with him. And so he brought all his own guys. So that means that means none of us get a spot that weekend. So we're at the comedy store. It's Thursday, I think. Sold out. Two hundred people, both shows. He comes to the popcorn stand to get some popcorn in between like his his opener going. And we start chopping it up. And he had just been on flagrant at that point. And I was like, Yeah, I was watching you on flagrant with Andrew, da da da. We started chopping it up. And I was just like, Yeah, it's crazy how like 
he had told a story about how he was at some club and the club made him use one of their openers and the opener did bad. The irony of this, obviously, is that y'all <laughs> is that people think Brendan Schaub is not funny, but he's talking about somebody else bombing. <laughs> so he had this story that he told on the he told on the podcast on Flagrant where he like he said how, you know, this one club, they had a guy opening the dude sucked or whatever. And and I told him, I was like, it's funny because when I when I saw you were coming, I just saw the podcast. And so I was thinking to myself, damn, if I open I got to make sure I don't bomb because I don't want this guy to talk about me on some podcast because he didn't say who the other comic oh, yeah. was. He's not going to give him that. Yeah, but yeah. that notoriety, right? But like that dude knows who he is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't want to be that dude who has to watch that podcast. Like, he's like, talk, but you can't even brag about yeah, it. Like, yeah. He's talking, hey, bro, nah, yeah, hey, yeah. I, I'm going to go text he's Andrew. Not. Hey, 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 Andrew, you know when he said he said the dude wasn't funny? That was, that was me, was me. So <laughs> Locked. we were chopping it up and he just goes like, he. this is what I say about Brandon Shop. Not, not about him being funny. He looked at me and he goes, yo, you want to do five minutes? You want to go up and do some time? And I was like, yeah. And so he literally told one of the other door guys, like, yo, take his name, go give it to the host, tell him I'm popping this guy in. So literally the host gets a piece of paper and he's like, oh, yo, Brendan's putting this guy up. Um, You know, he must be funny or whatever. So he works here, you know, and he brought me up and I got to do five minutes. Yo, that's dope. And as far as five minutes goes, any comedian who tells you they- That's a long time, right? Yes. Nah, it's nothing. Five minutes is light. Oh, okay. Five minutes is nothing. Anybody who tells you, yo, for five minutes, I killed- you shut up like <laughs> you didn't you, you you probably did all right you didn't you didn't kill bro like for five minutes you killed i had a good set it was fun and so it's always funny when people be like yo hey real quick shit on brendan shaw and i'm like comedy not for me but he's a good dude that's nice guy I, I, i'll give him that he was nice to me i don't yeah. know how he treats look um, before i get canceled i don't know how he treats women <laughs> i don't know what he's done to bobby lee's ex-girl <laughs> i don't know nothing about none of that i don't live in la don't hey, yo, leave me alone he just wanted a little muscle to go to his car what you need <laughs> I don't my more than listen bro listen that, bro. that whole shit was messy and yeah. i was here for yeah, yeah, yeah. it people bro. were crushing them, i was yeah. watching all the episodes like people, uh, what's going on people were killing brendan shaw yeah you know i don't even know like i don't know who i'm Somebody who's like active that I'm like, yo, I'm funnier than this dude. Damn, I don't have a lot of people that I'm like, oh yeah, I really think I'm better than. Him. You know where I see a lot of it? I be on, I go on like with my wife on cruise ships, and I'll go see who the comedians are just to oh, see okay. who's cracking. Yeah, and um, there will be people that I'll be like, oh, he got paid to be here. Yeah. I'm like, I could at least he got a free cruise. I'm like, I could at least get a. This could, I mean, I could at least help me pay my bills. Like, I could do this as a day. So I've had a lot of those where I'm like, oh, I could do this guy's this guy's job. Yeah. Um. The other part too is like you'll work with people, right? And they'll be doing that. You got to remember some people, some people you watch them bomb for 20 minutes. So you watch them struggle for 20 minutes. And then some headliners, you watch them suck for like an hour. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, I think for me, what, what it, that's why I was good when I worked at the comedy store in La Jolla. Cause like it reminded me that like it's not that crazy to think I could do that job. Because uh, I'm watching somebody, I'm like, this motherfucker's doing it. Yeah. I wish I had a good name that's just like, this dude sucks. So I could just shit on him and go viral for it. <laughs> He's bad. I wish I knew. <laughs> I know more people who should be famous that aren't famous. I'll say that. I know enough I know enough comics that I'm like, why isn't this dude big yet? Like, why is this? I, other- I, I asked, like, hip hop, local hip hop artists. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, yo, who's famous that you know you rap better? He's like, ah, oh, man, I ain't trying to put that out. I was like, yo, see, no, I like, want to know. Because like, yeah, you have to like, have like a little bit of cockiness to you. Oh, for sure. You're you like, yo, yeah. low key, humbly, hum, you know, being humble. Yeah. Yo, I shit on, you know, so and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the rap shit is crazy too, because like you might want a feature at some point or you might need, <laughs> right? you might need something and they're like, hey, remember when you sit on that podcast? <laughs> the feature's I like, yo, I heard the song, I like it, but I saw this podcast, yeah, bro. You be shitting on me, yeah. Yeah, that shit's crazy. I don't know if I have any anybody that i'm like yo i'm way better than but i definitely i mean everybody's comedy ain't for me either you know what right, i'm saying yeah, so i'll yeah. be like eh, it wasn't really that wasn't really it for me but you know it's cool i think in san diego i'll say this there's there's some funny people in san diego who are local like real from like guys who live here not dudes who like they live in la but they come down here for spots all the time but like out of people in san diego like i'm very confident that like i'm one of the better acts Top in 10, top five? Yeah, like I think I'm definitely top 10, top five out of like the people that are here. The logo? And, yeah, yeah. And I mean like as, as far as like um, there's tiers, right? Because there's like three or four dudes that are like they're headliners. They're, they're above us. Like they're in a little, they, they tour, they're active. But as far as like the local dudes, like we're all trying to make it. In the club scene and shit? Yeah, I'm like, bro, like, yeah, I'm like, I know what happens when we go on stage. I know what happens most of the time. So, and I think I, I have good respect for my peers. Like they know they know I'm not like I'm nothing light, and they know that it's like you can't box me in because like 
people will try to get you on the like, oh yeah, when it's a lot of brown, when it's a lot of like, when it's a lot of Mexican people, or when it's a lot of black people, or when there's a lot of this, like they try to get caught up in like, yeah, if there's a bunch of couples and this, his couple stuff goes crazy. I'm like, it could be all white people. It could be dude with a Trump hat. It could be, you know, black homies. It could be whoever, like that to me, it's like most of the time, it don't matter who's there. I'm going to still do my shit. I'm going to find a way. Like I'm a chameleon. Like I, I know how to be in with different people. And I think right. that's what's good about growing up in the hood is like you learn how to be around everybody and you learn how to mess with everybody. You know how to be cool with everybody. So you're not tight when you see a different kind of person. You just, you know how to it's move. It's not no culture shock. Yeah, shit. you know how to move in that room. But yeah, I'm definitely like for 100%. I mean, out of dudes in my rank, easily I'm like top. I mean, easily top five. But there you then, go. And I, but I, I hang. Shit, bro. Yeah, no, 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 no. And I can hang. And I can <laughs> hang with the dudes that are nice that like go on the road. Like those dudes, I say this shit all the time. If I get criticism from somebody who I look at, it's like, bro, you're not as good as me. I'm not really about to be like. It was like when Kanye was doing the whole. And obviously, Kanye is not a popular person to talk about. But he had that whole shit where he was like. Oh, if, if you, if you, if you make, don't make as much, you don't make me. much money as me. Why am I taking financial advice yeah, from like yeah, what yeah. you think about money or whatever? And it's not like on that type of time, but like at the end of the day, it's like if you're not somebody I could learn something from, I'm not gonna take your advice <laughs> to heart. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll yeah. listen to you. You might have something good to say, but like I'm not gonna be like hurt by it. Yeah. So that's like when somebody who dresses whack tries to like compliment your face. You're like, please, man, get the You're like, leave me alone. I, you, like, if you, you don't want it, this. Yeah, if you think it looks, if you if you like this, I'm worried that you like it. <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that's a, you got to like, you know, maneuver. Yeah. But I, yeah, talk your shit, man. Nah, bro. If you better than, the, better than, that's what you are and shit. Yeah, nah, I think, I wish I had a name too of dudes that I wish I was like straight up better than. I've definitely had headliners that I know I've, I've had to go like, so the, the normal setup for a show is like, a host does like 10 minutes. A feature will do like 20, 25. And then the headliner do like 45 to an hour or whatever. And so I've definitely done it where I'm the middle and I'll do 20. And I know that whoever's after me got to work. Oh, okay. Like you could feel you, it. you put them there. Yeah. Like you walk out yeah. and you're like, all right. <laughs> Don't Next. fuck it up. Next. And, and some people, and, hey, listen, and some people, bro, their, their audience is their audience. So like they're there to see that one person and you might be funny and it don't matter. Yeah, I've, I've had some sets where I'm like, oh, they're here to see this guy. They don't give. They're just waiting for me to get the fuck off the of stage. <laughs> no, like, yeah, you know yeah. speed it up. <laughs> I've seen that shit happen to like people who I know who are really good. Like one of my homies back in Rhode Island, like he's a beast. And whenever at the comedy club back home, whenever a big name comes through, they always put him up to feature because he's just really strong. And so he was opening for Dave Attell. Oh, that's what's and up. like he was open for David Tell, and midway through his set, some lady started yelling, "David Tell, damn, you want David Tell?" And he just started going in on this lady, bro. He was just like, "I can see if I fucking sucked." <laughs> He's like, "I'm up here killing right now." <laughs> yeah, he started going in on this lady, and like, yeah. So there's those there's those moments where you can either get buried or bury other people. But yeah, I feel confident for sure. You know what I'm saying? And the other thing too is like some people think because you know what happens in San Diego a lot, D- dudes from LA will come down. Acts or yeah, just like, people like, like comics from LA will come down and they get the spots because they might have like a little credit or whatever, and you'll watch them and you'll be like, oh hold up, <laughs> you hold on a second, yeah, you'll be like, hey this guy was on America's Got Talent, you be like, all right, they got a TV credit, this guy was on Comedy Central, and you watch them go up and you're like, huh, <laughs> so it's <laughs> that dream, easy, this dream is very attainable, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying, so it's um. It's interesting with that too. I used to deal with that in Rhode Island because it's like bo- the Boston comedy scene is real big, and so when you're from Rhode Island and Boston's right next door, like you know, like the Boston comics, they definitely look at the Providence, Rhode Island type comics, like oh, you're not as nice as us or whatever. But I used to watch a lot of Boston comics go to my home club and just suck. <laughs> it was like a thing that would happen where yeah. Boston comics would come down and have a hard time. So I to, anybody could be funny, you know, once, and anybody could be bad. You know what Boys, I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, so it happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I've had that happen. I'm sure there's mad people who seen me and I wasn't funny. Or they just didn't like me. So it's cool. But, nah. Brain you shot, won't man. see those clips. <laughs> nah, hell no. Those clips. <laughs> well, I'll say this. dead ass. if you follow me on YouTube and shit, I, on my vlog, I'm doing these little vlogs. I am posting, even when I have sets, I'll throw a clip in. Like, if it, if it was a rough show, I'll still throw a little clip of something I'm working on that's like, not good yet or not that funny and like i'm like cool so if you take the time to actually watch those stupid little vlogs that are like i was uh yeah. not i was watching it but now because i work yeah. in my car yeah for sure so i played it and yeah. i was listening yeah, yeah so it's kind of hard to like oh for sure for but sure i was yeah. like watching i was like oh shit because you were like oh it's my first voiceover vlog yeah, and i was like yeah, oh yeah. Right. so it's like yeah so those are like it's 
sometimes I'm trying to be more honest with those because like if you take the time to watch it, I'm like whatever. If you see me struggling on a set or trying to figure out a joke, that's like a cool little thing. I'm trying to like be more okay with that. So, but it's true though. If you do fuck up, man, you ain't posting that shit. Yeah. You post when the shit goes good. That's the yeah. hard part is to know like when you want to post something. You know what I'm saying? Like that that whole piece. But yeah, man, I think there's a lot of funny people in San Diego, bro. If you if you're trying to if people want to see comedy in San Diego, there's a lot of clubs. There's a lot of independent shows. There's a lot of free shows to go to. Um, and so I think that you can see a lot of funny people out here. But as far as people in San Diego go, for sure. I'm definitely put some respect on I'm Yeah, I'm, def, I'm definitely like <laughs> I'm definitely up there with that shit. Yeah, that's fucking dope, man. Shit. Yeah. Does your wife ever trip like, you know, eventually there's gonna be the, like the groupies yeah, the, and shit. You yeah. hear all these like famous uh comedians talking about like yo on the road, you know, the yeah, road, yeah, road yeah, tail yeah. and shit like that. So her tripping about like me just like do, wanting just to do like stand- the potentially of like yeah. there being a groupie and shit. She yeah, like, I think we've had more conversations. Lately, would it be real like about just like um, I think when you're married, bro, you can get caught up whether you're doing something where you're popping or not. Oh, no, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? And so I think for me, it's like I, I feel like that's like part of it. But also I talk about being married so much on stage. But you know bro, what I'm saying? Some of these, you know what I'm saying? Some of these yeah, women yeah, yeah. don't give a fuck. They don't. Yeah, or they find I, it like a challenge or like, Yeah, oh, I was going to say, I'm sure there's some of that part. And that's what I – we talk about it, but she don't trip. Like she don't really get like – worked up about it or anything like that i think for me i just make sure like i just deal with it you know what i'm saying honestly you know who's the weirdest old white ladies <laughs> no shit yeah old white ladies man they very like they like they, come they, they stuff like, your breed over like, here they, <laughs> <laughs> they love talking after the show. They love coming up. They're very like they like to like put their hand on your hand. You gotta be like, all right, cool. Very like touchy hey. people. Yeah. yeah, like they be on that. You know, they be on that bullshit. My, their husbands um, away. But I definitely make. I mean, I make business decisions of what is what's good for my like my own lifestyle. You feel me? Like right. I'm a married guy, so like you got to make smart choices. Like for example, like if one of my homies who's like a single guy like comes to do a show in SD and he's like books me on it with him, and he's a young, you know what I'm saying young cool kid he's like in his 20s and they're like hey we hitting this bar after the show i see who he's going with i'm like hey big dog i love you you have a great night my man <laughs> Wife, not, wifey wifey expect yeah, me to yeah, come I'm home i'm going home bro yeah. i'm not about to be i do that shit a lot after shows i'm like hey man i'm heading i'm heading home i'm out of here um so yeah she don't trip necessarily but i definitely think it's something i'm gonna have to deal with more the more i get into the shit because yeah. i mean look it's just realistic i mean look what kevin hart's been through you know what I'm saying? Pretty much everybody. I know there's been accusations against Dave. Allegedly. 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 There's been <laughs> accusations against Dave. Well, Kev, you don't even got to say allegedly with Kev because Kev made a whole fucking Instagram video about it. Well, not only that, you saw how he was moving. Like, yeah. P. Diddy's parties and shit. Yeah. And it's like, come on. That's bro. the thing. Is like, when you're that famous, you got to be careful or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it's. I think the road, the road is definitely something where people talk about. I've had a lot of people tell me like the big thing on the road is like, hey, man, stay away from waitresses. <laughs> like I've heard I've had that a lot. Like, hey, bro, don't play. Hey, listen, you don't want that mess. Do your shows. Go home. Go to your go hotel. Home, go to the hotel. <laughs> kick it with the comics. He's like, don't get caught up with these waitresses. <laughs> and that's, so that's all you got to hear. too. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. But and the other part, me, me and my wife talk about it a lot, though. Like a lot of comics get divorced. Yeah, a lot of comments get divorced. Like almost a lot. Like a like a shit. Lot, damn, lot, yeah. most of them. I mean, yeah. shit. Like you know, what I mean, I mean, it happens a lot. Or at but, least they go through the. Yeah, it happens. You know what happens to my wife? We'll we'll have a comic we like or that I've worked with that we're cool with or whatever, and they come into town and we'd be excited to see them, and then we'll go see their set and we'll realize like, oh shit, they got divorced because they start talking about it in their comedy. You know what I'm saying? So we'll be like. You you see them a year and a half ago and like their whole set is like so me and my wife going to dinner with like this yeah. other couple and then you, like a year later you're like yeah so now you know what I'm saying we separated we living in the same house you know what I'm saying like oh shit like yeah. so that happened with a couple of comics we really like and I know my wife definitely be looking at me like you need to figure it out <laughs> is this what you trying to yeah yeah, yeah, yeah figure yeah. it out so yeah I mean I don't think she trips I mean she's I would say this about me and my wife right now therapy is good do therapy guys even if you don't got a big problem in your marriage. Talk to somebody. It's good. It's good to have a referee. It's good to have somebody there. It's good <laughs> like to a judge is like, hey, yo, 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 yo. And sometimes not just a referee. Sometimes it's good to have somebody keep score. It feels good to win, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit's cool, too. Usually when you win, nobody hears about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you win, you don't even, you know what I'm saying, the way she You'd be like, yeah, you remember that time? No, no, it didn't. No. You didn't nah, do that. Nah, what he's nah, Exactly. Like, yeah, so it's, man. therapy's good. And I think, like, um, me and my wife really right now are working on, like, um, 
trying to not be codependent on each other trying to be interdependent man like trying to get over like the everywhere i go you gotta go and oh, everywhere i'm at you gotta be and i think part of that is because this i'm trying to do the comedy thing more seriously and i want to get to the point where i can be on the road is that she's she's like she's like i'm not going to every show she's still got a job she's still working so like she's gonna let me do my thing like go do a show whatever i just make sure my schedule's up i let her know what i'm doing where i'm at when i'm going you know and i just do location my best. on yeah, yeah man all that stuff man let her know yeah. like, what, what's happening and then um, right now, to one thing we're doing, which it can be tough. Like I have one weekend out of every month where it's just for me and her. I, I don't take no shows. I have one weekend out of the month where I just don't Little do date it. Date night. Yeah, man. We oh, we might go somewhere for the weekend, or we might like like last weekend we went like out with a couple of her friends for a little like double date thing on the Friday and then Saturday we like went up the coast went up towards like little San Clemente and all that and went to the beach and hung out and got some lunch and just did like our own little thing and like I said we don't got kids so like sometimes we're like alright we're gonna go to Vegas for the weekend it's like it's gonna... easier just to pick up and yeah, go yeah so it's um that's been cool we've been doing that for like the last like six or seven months where we've been doing one weekend out the month where we just i just don't take shows it could be tough because people be like yo i want to book you on this and i'm like mm. if, if it's not something that's going to really further me then I, I might talk to my wife like hey can we switch out the date on the weekend can we move it to this one because i got this opportunity but that's been good too like making time for her that's what i realized because i was working at the comedy store and i was like you know doing shows and i was working my day job i wasn't seeing my wife a lot Damn, it's yeah, hard. Yeah. It's hard, bro, to not to not hang out. So I can imagine where the road would be tough. So I don't even. Yeah, I think I think it's a reality. I don't think it's that deep for us yet, where she's tripping about anything. But I definitely think it's something we're like realistic about. Like, all right, what's this could happen? happen yeah. yeah, I would love it someday for my wife to be on the road with me and like be a part of everything. And like, you know, if I'm selling merch, I want her to be there. I've seen a lot of comics who do have good marriages that like do stuff. You know, like um, damn, his name's escaping me. There's a dude, I've seen him once in Boston, but his wife was with him. She's like his road manager. Like she does, everything. So she does everything for him. She goes on a road with him or whatever. And a couple other comics, like I met this um, comic I did a show with. Her name's Atsuko Okatsuka, this eight, this uh, Japanese comic. She's mad funny. And her husband is like her like road guy. Like So when I did a show with her, like he was handling everything. Like He got me paid that night. He took care of everything I wanted in the green room. He was running around making sure. That's I, what's like, up, man. He was the homie. So like I think there's a world where if you're in the right position, like your, your partner can like still be there and help you. But so someday I would like it where if it's cool places, my wife can go. And if it's like, you know, less desirable places, you feel me? Like if I'm going to like Wisconsin in like she could this, stay like home. in like January and it's going to be freezing cold. I'm like, hey, maybe just chill. Yeah. But if I'm going to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I'm going to like Florida and it's like a nice time of year or if I'm going, you know, somewhere. She's she, like bags or she's like, yeah, she's like, hey, let's yeah. go do that. You know what I'm saying? So I want her to still have that. But yeah, it's definitely I think less the groupies thing. I say this dead ass. The one thing I, I've I've dealt with is like I've never I've never thought much about a woman really like being that. I've been with my old lady for a minute, bro. We've been together fourteen years. God yeah. damn, we've been married seven. I've been, I've been with been, my girl for eight. So. Yeah, we've been together for a minute. So like I've been with my girl since I was twenty, like twenty going on twenty one. So I've been with my my girl for a long time. Me and me and Jazz been together for a minute. And the hard thing is like when you be with somebody for that long, like for me, I was like hype. Like I was growing up, like yeah, I had a couple girlfriends here and there, but like most of the time, I was like the, I was like the cool, safe, fat friend. You feel me? <laughs> like you know, like you you only get friends. You, you get friends though so many yeah. times. Even when I was in college, bro, all my boys who played on the basketball team, they all knew I had all the home girls that was looking like whatever. <laughs> They're like, hey, bro, I know you got the end fam. What's good with what's good with so and so? Like you become that yeah. person where you always just like you know you you just safe or whatever. And I think for a long time, I got comfortable where I just thought, like, ain't nobody checking for me, bro. I'm good. My wife, like, I got my wife. She, I got my one person who thinks I'm cool. And yeah. so this is dope. But I have had to learn, like, don't underestimate yourself. And like you said, people view things as a challenge or people will try to test what you, you know what I mean, what you're about. I and think so, also that and they see how you, like, if you, I don't know how you are with your, yeah. with your girl, like, in public or anything like that. But if you're, like overly affectionate and like poster and like show her love Thanks. and affection and respect the there's these these women who don't get that they're like i would want that yeah and yeah. what i tell you is just because he does it for her doesn't mean he'll do it for you nah not you know at what i mean <laughs> so, not at all but i'm the same way like i don't even i do photography and then people be tripping like hey yo you like your, you know your man's taking these pictures I'm not trying to fuck these hoes, man. Like, yeah. I'm not going to fuck up my shit. Yeah. For some, like, you know what I mean? One of my homegirls, her man's a photographer, and people always be asking her, like, yeah. you know, you don't feel uncomfortable he's with models all day? 
She's like, no. He's just taking pictures of him. Yeah. He comes home. He's going to edit pictures. He's going to hang out. Like, he's not. Yeah. I come home and show my girl, like, yo, babe, she could use <laughs> yeah, I think I think the point you made, though, is true. Like, just because you see some, a man doing something for one woman don't mean it's going to be for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think people, what they forget is, like, so for me, the big thing with my wife right now, especially, is she was there with me. We met college, broke, no money, on a bus, bro. My girl was with me before I had before I had any job, period. She was with me when I was broke, had no money, had no car. You feel me? We used to ride the bus together, me and my girl. You That's know romance. To, right you know what I'm saying? To go wherever we want to go. You know what I'm saying? Like To go from that to being able to go on vacation and have a little something and still be like, oh, have, have a job, but like, I'm chasing my dream at the same time and doing the stuff I want to do. You know, feel me? Like, nobody's going to get, nobody's going to give me that either. And that's what it's hard. Like when you get these thoughts in your head where like, oh, this girl looks like this. Or you get like, you might get a little excited. Your head get big because somebody give you a compliment or you might feel a little. Somebody hard eyed you yeah, picture. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey. You might be feeling away. You might be feeling but she like, ain't going to hold you down. Yeah, exactly, bro. Like you got to remember that. And I, I've learned that a lot over the years where like my wife, man, like she was there for me when I was like, had when I never even wanted to do comedy or never even thought of like, you know what I'm saying? Never even thought about it. And she was supportive when I decided to do it. You know what I'm saying? And she been there for me through all the stuff I've wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? It's something real about a woman who really like really held me down. Like I've been broke. Like I've I've had no job and been in college with her where she had a job and like I've been there where it's where you're hugging know, her behind bro, at yeah. the register, like yeah, exactly. when I blow up, baby. When yeah, I blow- exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like having that <laughs> moment where like she's holding me down. She a good woman, bro. Like she really like she really holds me down, bro. And, and that's the thing is like you know that. So like when it comes to another female, like you're not just gonna be like, oh, you're just gonna get this treatment automatically. Nah, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's not yeah. how it goes. So yeah, you definitely gotta be careful. Don't just think it's gonna be for it. It's, it's not everybody. gonna be sweet and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely think the one thing I've seen though, I will say with comedy, bro, is like the more confident I get on stage and when I'm out there and I'm doing shows and stuff, you could feel that you are more attractive to people. Because of the energy you give off, or whatever the case may be, and I used to never really pick up on any of that stuff, and now I'm like, oh, if I was a piece of shit, <laughs> this would be I could be a piece of shit. Like yeah. that's crazy, like that, and that to me is like that's where you got to really know yourself and like figure yourself out. You know what I'm saying? What's really important at the end of the day? You feel me? So, I'm, my yeah. thing I've had to learn over the years, bro. I'm just too. Fr- I've always been too friendly because I think when that's you, see. yeah, because you, 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 you know what I'm saying? Because when you when you grow up, when you I think when you grow up and you're like the friend zone fat friend, like you just used to being around women and hanging around and like you know what I'm saying being supportive and friendly and all that bullshit, and you don't realize that like that's cool to a point. Yeah, because you know what you're saying, like, because I'm bro, same shit. It's like just because I say it, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it with those intentions, but it. You know, it may sound like that. Yeah. Or, or you make yourself available. But one thing I've also learned over the years, man, you like you, you got to have boundaries to even your availability. You yeah. feel me? Like when you pick up the phone or when you text them or when you they're your friend. But like you got to figure that out, that boundaries, those balances. You know what I'm saying? That, that shit got to get checked. You know what I'm saying? Big time. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I definitely think about that where I could understand a comic on the road being like met this girl in this city. And like we started talking and texting like talk about that shit in therapy a lot, bro, where it's like. It's not crazy to be attracted to somebody or to be interested in somebody. But what do you do with that? What's right. your action behind it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My therapist always say that shit. He'd be like, hey, he's like, you know, it's like a lot of guys who get caught up. It starts with like them being like, I would never do X, Y and Z. You know what I'm saying? And next thing you know, now you're texting somebody. And then before you know it, now you're at a restaurant with them. And you're like, oh, I would never do nothing. Now you're in the car with him. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now you're hitting your boy up like, hey, yo, how I get the good deal on the child support? (laughs) Right. You know what I mean? That's that shit. Escalates real quick. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah. My wife don't trip, though, man. I I will say, I think she has a healthy jealousy. I think her her jealousy is fair. Like, I think when she sees, I think when she says certain shit, I'll be like, you know what? Yeah. You got that one. That's right. You right. You right. You right. Low key. Yeah. I fuck. I, I slipped. Yeah. We were at Starbucks, and the girl just the girl that like handed us our coffee. She just had like this interesting like look to her. Yeah. And I was like, that girl looks like she's innocent. Yeah. And she's like, you think she was cute? And I was like, no, I just think she was. She's like, you little yeah. hoe. And I was like, Bro, damn. My, my wife sent me some video on Instagram of like a. It was a dude who he uh, he he let his girl walk through the door, and then he held the door for the next girl. Oh, and the girl okay. was like, thank you. And then, like, right afterwards, like, his girlfriend's you. like, thank you. And, like, so she sent me that because, like, that shit is real life. Because that's, I'm, like, that type of shit. Like, hold doors and all that type of shit. 
And so, like, my wife, she's funny. She be busting my balls all the time about, like, you know, like, if I do something or say something or whatever. So she be on me, man. So I think she got a healthy – it's respectable. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's not even about being insecure or anything like that. It's just you just got to – sometimes you got to remind motherfuckers you're paying attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. You got to yeah. know, bro. You got to know. I don't know. I think that's important too, man. That shit – for me at least, I always feel like if my wife's, like, saying something, I'm like, well, she's paying attention. <laughs> that's good you know what I'm saying like she's not taking me she's not looking at me going like nobody want this motherfucker yeah. like, which is I mean that's a shitty feeling to have to be like oh, nobody wants me you know what I'm saying yeah. like, so for her to be, to take notice of like you could you know that's good that's good for your little ego like I, all right. I tell her like man ain't nobody want me relax she's like all right, <laughs> like, you know what's crazy? Like, yo, and I, I'm not like not even on some big head shit. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like I used to say that shit too. And then that, the shit's crazy is that your girl would look at you like, "Well, what the? What, I want you. <laughs> what are you trying to say about me? Well, you dumb, so oh, like. <laughs> bro. I used to do a joke when I first started doing comedy where I used to be like, uh, my wife, like all my home girls are like girls that are like out of my league, like girls that are too hot that would never date me or whatever. Your wife's like, yeah, you yeah, see? yeah, you know oh, yeah. Yo, bro, I, I, I did the joke and I'm like, ah. That's funny, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I used to be like, like the whole joke was basically around how like my wife just my wife, if you're hot, it's cool. It's no sixes, you know what I'm saying? Because sixes be <laughs> sixes be doing a thing, boy. And so, but that so it's funny, but like then like at the end of the day, it's like it's a joke, but then your wife be like, Oh, only you can only pull yeah. ugly girls, huh? Oh, <laughs> so, so, only, I'm oh, ugly. so what so what that yeah. say about and you be like, Oh shit, it was just jokes. That's one thing I've had to learn. You can't just when you do comedy, bro, you can't just look at your wife and be like, It's just jokes. Yeah. Now nah, cause there's sometimes there's like a little truth behind the joke. Yeah. I remember one time I, I had like my boys on here, like my boys' boys. Yeah. And we have, you know, like boy talking some shit. I don't know if they're like, um, you gonna go to the gym for your girls? Like, no, I'm gonna go for me. And she was kinda like, Why you say it like that? And I was like, I didn't mean like I could see like somebody who don't know me can be like, yo, that was kinda like kind of out of pocket towards this girl and shit like that yeah. but i was like well you know i i don't mean like but now you, you're right you gotta like watch what you you got it, low man. key say what you you watch what to. you say i've had jokes i've changed like things i've jokes i've moved around that like i'm like mm. at first i'll do the jokes and then like you know eventually my wife will see some stuff she'll see a set or whatever and she might be like mm, i don't really like that or i don't like the way that like that one plays like or whatever and so i used to be like really firm like this is my art you gotta let me like express let myself me cook. stop yeah. taking this shit so serious but at the end of the day it's like she got feelings too and that's that's real so i've had some jokes like that where i've been like and my wife's funny so i'll tell her i'll be like like i had a joke i was doing and, and you know it was kind of about her and then like i, I she didn't want it to really be about her so i kind of shifted it to be about like a family member but it really didn't like fit the same and then eventually we sat down and kind of like twisted the joke around to be more about me and then that was kind of like a more of a good place for it. And honestly, the joke's been better since I've done it that way, where I changed it. I've seen it happen where it's like, all right, people are responding to the joke differently because it's about me. So this stuff, like, I just can't be too proud because I think especially like when I started feeling like I was getting better, she'd be like, oh, what about like this or whatever? Or like I talk about her. You look at her like, come on. Yeah, I'm like, come on, this is not serious. I'm the pro. Yeah, I'm the pro. I, I, I know what I'm doing. Like, you don't understand comedy. She's <laughs> yeah. just like, yeah, but I got feelings. You I'm think like, Brendan Schaub is funny? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> You try to take me to the Brendan Shop show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try to take me to the Brendan Shop show. <laughs> nah, that's true, man. 100%. And I think the biggest thing is like, it, I mean, even though people don't know how you and your wife are, like, or me and my fiance are, like, I still have to give her her respect. You know what I mean? I can't have her looking dumb. 100%. Because I ain't going to, I'm not going to be cool with somebody like making a joke about it because I'm gonna be like, Nah, see, yeah. so now you're being disrespectful. Now yeah. we got a problem. That's real. And I mean, look, I think for me, most of the time, right, I've always put my wife in my jokes where I kind of uplift her or whatever and put her in a position where she's, I'm the butt of the joke and she's like, you know what I'm saying? I definitely don't do the whole like, oh, being married sucks. Like, I don't do that kind of yeah. comedy where I'm just like shitting on my wife. There's things that are funny that come up that I like. But at the same time, it's like, because wives be wifing. They be wifing. You know bro. what I mean? Like, and I tell my wife all the time, like, it's not even if you're married or whatever. If you're in a relationship, it's relatable for some people. Yeah. So relatability is good. But at the end of the day, like, I've had people tell me, no joke is worth fucking up your marriage <laughs> over. So you got to make decisions. You got to make business decisions. And so I've been trying to get better at, like, the joke's not really always about the relationship. Lately, I've been doing more stuff where it's like, it might be us together at something but she's she's just an she's just a piece of the joke she's not the joke she's not in the joke she's just it's a part of it it's really about me now i'm trying to get into that because you do get comfortable bro i got comfortable leaning into like relationship material and just being like and i could feel other comedians being like oh yeah Rui just does his little i'm married my black <laughs> wife like 
all y'all San Diego comedians that don't say shit to me, I know, I know for a while, I know how it was when I first got here. He's only funny because his college students come to the show and they uh, laugh at him. That's and, hater oh, talk. He's only funny because he goes on stage and talks about how his wife is black and he does his Beyonce joke. I know that's how y'all felt. I want to hear that Beyonce. And joke. now sometimes when I, you know what I'm saying? Now when I come out and I do like, you know, some what y'all would be like is hacky. I'll do like ten minutes about being on an airplane, and y'all be like, "Oh, it's just airplane humor." I'm like, "Ah, what was a real story that happened in my life?" I mean, Jerry know? Jerry Seinfeld made millions doing shit like, "What's what the I, deal yeah, with yeah, airplane?" Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, bro. So you know, I think it's uh, it's interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like to to see how people react to what you're doing. But at the end of the day, the only person I really got to worry about if I really piss off is my like. I gotta care what she thinks. Like, oh, yeah, so I'm trying to look out for her. My mom has been funny. I, I've been doing a couple of things here and there where I bring up my mom, and my mom. Um, my mom be on YouTube a lot. Oh, does she? Yeah, my mom watched a lot of YouTube. My mom's weird. My mom watched a lot of like uh, it'd be like like people in Korea like cooking or like on the street. Hey, for, yeah. for some reason, yeah. those videos I'll be sitting there watching Yo, them. Mom, this dude just cooking up shit on his boat. I'm bro, like, what you doing? Mom, I don't even eat fish. I'm my like, mom be watching it. And my mom's yeah. hard of hearing, so like she'll just have the captions on and she'll just be chilling, watching it or whatever. But my dad is the homie he subscribes to my youtube channel and stuff so every now and again i'll have a clip or something pop up and i was putting some like youtube shorts up and my mom like watched the video my dad was like oh watch this video Rui posted and i have captions so my mom you know she keep up read or whatever and uh she did not find it funny that i was talking about it she was like oh you oh i'm a joke i'm a joke i'm a joke to you your mom's a real hey, bro, bro. Bro. Mom, like, oh, i'm a joke to you and then like i call right like I, my dad's like oh yeah your mom wasn't feeling the joke or whatever and i was like mom what happened she goes i put your father your father said he was going to show me something on youtube and i thought he was going to show me somebody important and then he showed me you and i was like oh okay i bet so my mom's funny, man. My mom, my mom will tell me there's a comedy club right down the street from my parents live, and whenever it's packed, my mom will call me and she'll be like, "I I went by the comedy connection. It was packed. It was sold out. How are your show's going?" Like, <laughs> like, the low key yeah, shade is the yeah, backhanded. My mom's comments. always like, "Hey, make sure everybody knows you got your funny for me. It's not from your dad." <laughs> like she'd be on that shit, but like, um, yeah, I got to worry about my mom too a little bit. But at the end of the day. It's gonna be cool. Like I was doing jokes about my grandfather's funeral, like right after it happened. Oh fuck! Yeah, I got right up. A lot of times that'll happen, bro. I'll go to something and I'll come back. I'm like, we're gonna talk about it. Like, well, my father. There's a way of coping bro. too. Yeah, you got to do it, bro. Yeah. I tell people all the time, especially if it's a show that I know is like, I'm just gonna work out some new stuff. My father, when my father-in-law passed away last year, the first thing I got up on stage to talk about was like him passing away, and like my wife's family and just all the shit we was going through and. And I ended up getting a joke. In the end, that rant that I did for like 10 minutes, it ended up turning into like two or three minutes of material I used is still good and has nothing to do with the, the traumaticness of the of the, the experience, yeah, but yeah. it has to do with like, you know, I got a funny little joke about, you know, black people on funerals and black funerals and shit. <laughs> and black people love that shit. And I love when I tell that joke with them and they, they know the shit that I'm talking about. And it's great. Some of my friends haven't seen me do stand up since the first time they saw me. And that could have been five, six, seven years Way ago. Way better now. Yeah, they have no idea. It's funny. Yeah. Like one of my boys, like shout out to my guy, Francis, my my best man. And he didn't that's, make you that's, his that's, best. That's like my it, dog. It, it's it, crazy. Low key hurts me, man. I'm you know telling you, that's my dog. But he, I remember he saw me recently, like maybe like a year ago. And after the show, he grabbed me and he was like, bro, I'm not trying to like, I don't, don't take it like disrespect. He's like, bro, you're so much better than you were before. And he's like, and I, oh. he's like, and I, he's like, yo, and he's like, yo, no, he's like, and I used to think you were already really good. I would watch you and think, yo, you're really good. He's like, and now I'm watching you and it's like, holy shit, bro. Like, you're like really on some different shit. So it's, I would like to see my friends see me do like a long, like an hour, like an hour stuff. I really don't know if I have it in me yet. I don't know if I got it. To hold people, the longest I've done right now is like 35, 40 minutes. That's a long time. Yeah. But usually it goes by quick if yeah. it's like good. You're like, oh, this is yeah, smooth, 30, 30, smooth. Yeah, 35 has been, yeah. been light. And I got like another like definitely 15, 20 in the can where I'm like, oh, I could have did this. I could have did that. So that's been good. Like the local bookers, man, in San Diego, I got a lot of love for them, bro. They've been putting me on in, in bars and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a couple weeks ago, I was in... North Park at some uh, 619 Spirits. I was in there. <laughs> they had a stage, some lights, and we had a show. It was sold out. It was packed. It was fucking dope. And um, I did 35. And so this year is just like keep building towards the hour. And so, yeah, we're going to do the hour. And then hopefully, yeah, I think I think film it to see what what the jokes are looking like. And then maybe 2024, maybe a self-produced thing. But, yeah, that's the goal. The goal this year is. Big things, big yeah, things. Man, an hour. And then uh, hopefully do some more, do some colleges. 
and do some cruises because that'll help me get some money because I really want to quit my day job. What's a, if you don't mind me asking, yeah. like, what's a, what's a gig pay? Like, an, like an average. So honestly, like if you're working a club in, in San Diego, if you're the host, each show, you would make like between 50 and $75 for the show to host. You would make between 100 to like 125 or so to like 150 max per show to feature. And then to headline, it really depends on your splits. That's what it comes down to. Some places pay mm. you a flat rate where they'll say, hey, we're going to pay you X thousand dollars for the weekend. If you got if you got a little bit of juice, you can do a door deal where like you get, say, the minimum you make is like, say they say three grand for the weekend. But they might tell you three grand is the bottom. And then you could do it where if you sell X amount of tickets, you get 85 percent of the door. Oh, you shit. You get a lot of So then you can do your door deal. So like some of my homies that I've been working with, um, I'm about to go on the road for a couple of shows with my boy Zoltan, who's very funny. He's popping right now in San Diego and like all around the country. His TikTok's going nuts and he's doing good. He's told me some stories where it's like he'll bet on himself and he'll be like, yeah, like he'll take 90 percent of the door and he'll sell out like four or five shows. And you know what I'm saying? You can make you can make somewhere between, you know, like say like six and like 10 racks for the weekend. Yo, that's and, straight money. But I was yeah. thinking right now, you're like 150 like a show and I was like if you do like a few of those a you week man yeah, 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 you like low yeah, key can get away from yeah, your yeah, day yeah. job so that's, yeah. What, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to and so like cruises and colleges I bring those up because they pay good like so like a college gig for a headliner you're probably going to make anywhere between a thousand dollars and three thousand dollars for one show that's straight yeah so that's the thing so a lot well, of people look. would do colleges because like you can do like one or two colleges a month especially during that peak season and you can make enough money where you could pay your rent yeah. So then you can go from there. Then the rest of the stuff is like, you know, you Your just work shit, at it. Yeah. You just see what's up. One thing I want to film for sure, I have this idea I want to work out. And I'm like, this was put in the universe shit. Like, since I'm here on the pod and you're asking cool shit. Like, I <laughs> like um, I work at a college and I feel like I, that's one thing. I don't talk a lot about my job on stage that much because some people don't. The college thing is cool, but like, if you didn't go or you not you don't have a kid who's in college, sometimes some of the things can get lost in translation or what, what it's about. So some of it works at a comedy club, but some of it doesn't. But I know for a fact, I know these kids. I've been working with college students for like 10 plus years. So it's like, I can't wait to be able to just sit in a room with them and just shit on them for an hour and just do crowd work and bullshit. <laughs> they would like, probably really love yeah. it just because they know what is, that's yeah, hella relatable really to yeah, them. Yeah, and, and that's shit. the thing is like, yeah. I get it because like, I have to keep up because like, I'm, I can't get old. I have to be around. I have to pay attention. So I have this idea where I really would like to film something in SD at the school I work at. And I would like to title it either something crazy like, Count up how many years it's been since I, gra- since I graduated college, but I've been working. So whether it's like 12th year senior or some bullshit or name it like help me quit my day job or <laughs> I hate working here or some stupid shit. Like yeah. I want to and I want to film something short, maybe like a 20, 30 minute thing. Where, but it's all me with the college kids doing college material and then really push that out to try to see if I can get a college booking agent and then oh, that'd be dope. start booking some colleges. I think that's going to be like a real a real bag for me that's going to like help me on that trajectory. Um, and then once I can do that, man, hopefully the TikTok and Instagram and whatever social media is big can get me to a little a little boost and then start getting more shows and hit the road. Yeah, man. I really wanted like this year, man, hopefully I can execute a little bit and it's really only get February, after it. man. You about to blow up. Yeah, bro. I'm really hoping yeah. on it, man. And I think even like getting to do I really appreciate you having me on, bro, because it's like it's literally like social media just connected. That's why I hashtag San Diego and a lot of my, my stuff I'll post because it's like I'm hoping people who see a lot of stuff about what's going on in the, in the city like that they might catch it. Yeah. And I have people write that on the page. People like, oh, I never see like San Diego comedians on my For You page. This is so dope. Like I should come to a show and it's like, I'm hoping that that's gonna, you know. I told my boy because my boy be uh, hitting the, like the scene. Yeah. Um, He does stand up but I don't know if he's doing it right now but yeah. he goes to like the open mics and shit oh, yeah. and I send him your profile I was like yo check out this dude like yeah. you know he's gonna come on the podcast and he's been on here before oh, he's yeah. like oh I've never seen him but I'm gonna check out his shit yeah, yeah. You know, cause that's he's he's into the scene so I was I like you know what I mean like that's one more person yeah man have him hit me up man. I almost had him like come yeah yeah uh, but he gets a little bit shout out to Gabriel but he gets a little bit um what's his name Gabriel Gabriel his, his IG is uh, Gabriel Conchile. Gabriel Conchile. All right. That that's the the cool thing about like a a city is like if you can get people to support each other. That's the hard part, I mean? man. I've had a girl. Shout out to Susie, but she she kind of in that scene, the music scene, and we were talking about that like how hard it is in San Diego. Like, don't nobody want to help each other out and shit. I'm over here like, yeah. yo, I rather support San Diego than like outside like respectfully because like this is my city, man. Like, that, I agree. With I'm you. trying to show love to like when yeah. I saw San Diego, I was like, he's in San Diego, like yeah. 
And then I heard Dominican. I was like, he's not from San Diego, but I'm still yeah. asking him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. And I love, man, I'll tell you right now, man, San Diego's been, this is the longest place I've ever lived outside of my hometown. That's what's up. And I, I love it here, man. I love the people. I love that there's real, there's real people here. I think because San Diego is like such a, you get a lot of people who move here, like, right, like me. Like, I moved here for work and I'm not from here. You get a lot of out of town people move here. But there's a lot of people who are from SD who are like just, real good ass people like who really been here their whole lives and like they're they're really what makes this this place such a cool place bro it's not just the gas lamp and fucking pb and that it's, it's the whole it's the whole county of san diego like san diego as a whole bro whether you're in chula vista or wherever you're at bro every everybody is bringing something bro like yeah. the food the culture the people the vibes like this is like bro it's a i tell people all the time people like yo san diego what's i'm like bro like I live somewhere where people would like want to come to vacation, but also it's not so it's not f- so fake. Like it's still, LA it's still real. Shit. It's still real people. You know what I'm saying? And I love that shit, San Diego. I, I think if folks can support each other, it'd be dope. But it's hard because everyone's competitive. Yeah, and everybody wants to make it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. I think it's cool. Like it's like I said, man. To me. I look at this year like good things are coming, bro. I'm posting more. You hit me up to be on this podcast, which was cool. Be at my, I was at my barbershop and like there's a kid who comes in. We just all be on the same schedule kind of and I see him all the time. That's he, funny how you become like not boys, but bro, like you, you become, see because he nah, sits next to you at the same 100%. time every week. It's crazy because out here like like I, I've been meeting people at the shop and you see him same schedules and everything. Back home, I had the same barber back home since I was like a little kid like. All like this this lady who worked with my mom, she's a hairdresser. All her sons are barbers. I went to school with two of them, and the oldest, he was my barber since I was like ten. Like my whole life, he been my barber. Cut my hair for my wedding. That's my dog. At one point, he had a shop. It didn't go good because everyone was waiting on him, and he couldn't get his other barber. Right, oh, so yeah. be, so he ended up selling the shop to the cousin, and he just opened at his crib. He just turned his basement. He made one room, a little suite. He got couches, TVs, and like what would happen is like we would all go hang out, but the guys who had the same time a week where we would go we would all be there the same day like if it was wednesday nights at this time Waiting and shit, yeah we'd yeah. all be in there hanging out everybody's playing dominoes everyone's shooting <laughs> dice everyone's drinking we're talking shit we're watching movies and it's just the fucking homies bro and so like this kid at the shop i see this dude all the time and i started noticing he'd be bringing bags with him of um of shirts and stuff to give to his to give to his barber and i'm just like bro what's going on i started following my ig and he makes a lot of cool shit bro and like the the barbers there they started putting his clothes out to sell the merch at the shop what's the, what's the name of it um, it's called suave uh, it's suave. called suave yeah i forget his i forget his um ig handle but like he's he's a cool dude man i forget his, his real name but he got everything is it's just got the little suave got the little suave on and shit and he does like a lot of cool shorts that he does like hand he hand he put throws paint on him and shit and does, that's it, all, what's up. does it all by hand a lot of cool shirts and stuff and um it's just shit like that where you'd be like man like it's good for people sometimes you can't get the support from like the people who do the same thing as you. Yeah, so sometimes just you that gotta, competitive so, yeah, and shit. Yeah, so sometimes you got to take the support from people who do, you know, things that are adjacent. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, that's like, for good. me, right? Like, if so, if, if somebody doesn't mess with me and don't want to put me on a comedy show or whatever, but you hit me up to put me on a podcast, it's like, that's love. Like, that's what's up. You know what yeah. I mean? And the same way for me, like, now going forward, like, whenever somebody's, like, looking for stuff, like, I'm always going to, not just share the clip from when like I was on the show, but like I'm gonna share the clips from like for future stuff when stuff is fire. I'm like, yo, check out this pod. Like, and is is at least you get the because I think when you post and you do this shit like this creativity stuff, like you know what it's like to take L's, bro. <laughs> you know what it's like to post and have nobody watch yeah, it. You post and you're like, I thought that was fucking hilarious, bro. You sit up and no edit, fucking love. Edit, 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 yeah. edit. That's how I feel about even the clip you saw, bro, on TikTok. Couple hundred thousand views. I'm like, hey, cooking. on yeah. IG, it's like three thousand views. I'm like, uh, all right. Like, it, was, it, was, it wasn't cracking for IG, I guess. You know, <laughs> IG's dying or what was going on? It's just crazy. Yeah, so be like know, that. It's good to have like you when you know how to you know how it's like to take those L's. You know what I'm saying? So. You can just respect, I think, the work people put in more and, like, treat it, treat it like, with the respect it deserves, so. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's 100% true. Well, shit, I ain't going to try to keep you. We've hey, been talking God. for two hours and hey, shit. Bro, you, that shit hey, went by quick. You know what I like, though, is you can chop this bitch up however you feel. Like, yeah. that's the cool part about <laughs> pods, though, is, like, you'll talk for mad long, and you'll be like, all right, what are we going to do with that? I'm going to get rid of this part. <laughs> man, this is cool, but, like, oh, this right here. Yeah. That's the best part, man. So. I try to get, like, the interesting clips, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just to, like. 
snatch somebody's attention like what yeah. she, what are they talking 100%, about 100 percent, bro yeah, nah, so. i appreciate you for having me nah, i appreciate it man uh yeah. please shout out your ig handles so they can find you oh, on tiktok yeah, sure man i mean I, obviously i'm gonna tag you as well yeah so. yeah yeah everything on social media is all my actual name everybody be like why you use your name because it's just uh, nobody else got my name so my name is Rui montia and that's my my ig on everything so that's r-u-i-m-o-n-t-i-l-l-a so Rui montia that's on everything um literally like if you look up at Rui Montilla, that's me on ig tiktok instagram facebook everything is is that and then hashtag Rui comedy that's like we throw that hashtag in there you'll find some clips for sure easily pop ups pops up that's super up. quick that's yeah. a unique name too yeah man my dad's my dad so my my dad's portuguese and Rui is a very common portuguese name when you were um, saying it, and I was like, "Is he saying Rudy?" And yeah. then when I when you spelled it, I was like, "No, I knew I was not." Like, nah, nah, nah. I thought nah. we were bugging this. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people. I tell sometimes I tell people it's like, yeah, like Louis, like Louis with an R. So yeah, my dad. That's my dad's name. I never. We're well, growing so up. So you're junior. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But it's crazy because it's weird. So all right, before we leave, but junior weirdly, my my technically, my, I'm a mom's last name. Oh, okay. So it's crazy. So I don't have my dad's full name. They my, were mad at that time. Yeah, like. it was. Well, my mom did. My my mom named me out of spite because her and my dad was beefing. <laughs> See, and, my, and, my, and my dad didn't. My dad didn't want me to have his name. Oh, so, that's so, my, up, so they didn't talk. So my dad found out I was born like two days later or whatever. And my mom was like, "Yeah," and I named him after you. So my, it was crazy. My name is Rui. My middle name is Junior, and then my last name is Montilla. So that's my, hilarious. So I have my mom's last name, which is a big deal for my grandfather. Because my grandfather, rest in peace, he had all daughters. So, oh. so a lot of people don't have, at least from him, didn't have his own, his name. But my grandfather, man, rest in peace to Manolo, man. Manolo used to, he was just, he, he, was a, he used to have a tow truck company, he's a mechanic, and he used to just be like, Montilla only, Montilla only all the time. <laughs> and so that's my, that, that's, you know, that's that's my last name. So I don't have my dad's last name, but Rui, man, yeah, Portuguese. Unless you're the, unless you like the Lakers, Rui Hachimura just got picked up by the Lakers. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so shout out to that Japanese black dude. You know what I mean? He be yeah, that's interesting. I like yeah. it. I like the mixing. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's more mixing needs to be done anyway. Nah, I shit. agree. So that's why I never changed it. People were like, oh, you could take your dad's last name when you're 18, or you could whatever. And I'm like, for what, bro? I, Yo, I went the opposite. Like, I don't fuck with my dad's family at mm-hmm. all. Yeah. And so like most like legally mm-hmm. like my shit his last name yeah yeah but like on social media i don't use it i use my mom's last name yeah 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 man but social media my name is just my name so it's easy to find me um yeah man follow me on all that stuff i'm on youtube now I'm posting, check them out yeah i'm trying to post more content on youtube so when's your next show here in san diego sheesh next show in san diego is gonna be let's see i got a show damn one problem is where it's at definitely man go on my ig hit my, him, hit, my, hit my link tree but yeah when this drops i got a show on wednesday uh i want to say it's in east lake i think Damn, Chula Vista Brewery, I think, is where it's at. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm on that joint on a Wednesday night, just popping into that. And then, uh, let me see, Thursday the 8th, I'm going to be at Amplified um, over in East Village on a Rift City show. So I got a couple of joints. And then, I, yeah, and I think I got something else. So, hey, check, check my link tree because I definitely got some shows um, the week this drops. I'll, be, I'll have some shows for sure that week. There so. you go. Yeah. Shout out to you. I appreciate it, man. And uh, Thank you, bro. until next time, yes, yes, you know what I mean? You. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You looking for me, you can find me at the spot. Chopping it up with Jonah. We talking about what's hot on the block. Up in Dago, man, we bumping. Uh, keeping it confidential, you know this how we coming. We in front. Uh, looking for that real, better tune in and stick by. Put on for the city every time that I dip by. Uh, get into that greedy every time that we sit down. Promise you it's real every time that I get round. Come on. <laughs> Been in the field playing. We-